You are listening to These Changing Times Radio at thesechangingtimesradio.neen.com. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is the illusion of knowledge. If you would like to donate to These Changing Times, please go to www.thesechangingtimesradio.neen.com. Thank you. And welcome everybody to the What We Don't Know show on These Changing Times Radio com, And that is Times with a Z or a Z, depending where in the world you may be at this time. And we will be having uh, Tammy Pepperman joining us shortly in a little bit. And uh, right now we do have our panel members, uh, Ravana 9000, and we also have Graphcat, and we we also have my cuz tonight. I don't know if she'll be able to talk. She may, uh, but she will be putting some questions or comments into the chat, and uh, I'll I'll make sure that the audience gets to hear that, the listeners and everything. If you have questions out there and you want to call in and you want to comment, you can do so at seven eight five three three six five one nine zero. Please wait until we start a topic before you call, though. <laughs> Just saying. Um, Anyway, uh, we got a lot that I want to uh, talk to, talk about tonight. You know, the last couple of days I've been, uh, it, it seems like I, I get on these, these tangents to where all of a sudden new information starts coming in, because uh, there's a heck of a lot that I don't know. Um, and uh, we've been discussing it in, in our private chats and everything, and decided it was about time that we brought uh, the information that we have and what we don't know and talk about uh, possible reasons behind it, uh, possible uh, solutions that we can employ, um, and just trying to figure out in general what the frick is going on. Um, Things are getting strange. They're getting stranger every day. And, of course, we know the government's bad. Of course, we know that they're not our buddies, our pals. they don't give a crap about us. We know this. They have been uh, promoting genocide against us for eons, you know. Um, and so that's the stuff we do know. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff going on that we have questions about. And uh, I think tonight we need to start it. I know a lot of you have heard about these uh, uh, Google barges. You know, the Google barge. Uh, the big giant things that they've parked on the East Coast and the West Coast. I think Ravi said there's like uh, eight of them or something like that. And they they have uh, uh, smaller ones and these really, really big ones that can house up to 5,000 people. Well, we got a really good look at one. Some guy who had parked on the uh, dock had the foresight to bring a little, uh, one of the little man, uh, unmanned little flying drone dealy things and he put a camera on it and he flew it over the uh, Google uh, barge and uh, yes that is correct Um, uh, he flew it over the barge got some really really good pictures and it doesn't at all look like the luxury cruiser or whatever that it's supposed to be in fact um, it's made up of shipping containers and uh, we have maybe discerned that maybe on top of it instead of having a deck where people can go and party you know like on most of these cruise things you go to the top deck so that you can look out over the ocean or wherever you're at up and we just drop cuz maybe she'll be able to join us back again we're hoping but um she uh, uh, uh or google uh these has these pipes that run across the top of it that we think may be for uh, fresh water. Um, so, but anyway, um, there was another interesting thing about Google today that that GraphCat uh, sent us, and uh, we're going to stick with Google for a little bit because uh, uh, a lot of people are, you know, we know some people. Let's face it, guys. We do know some people who really think Google's fantastic. It's the best thing since. Uh, uh, bread and butter, you know. Ninety uh, percent of us, though, see it for what well, it well, is—a well, well, big Google spy organization. Well, 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 
Google's motto. What's their motto? What used to be Google's motto? Mm, don't no be idea. evil. Isn't that what it was? Really? No, their motto used to be "Don't be evil." <laughs> that was one of their sayings. You know, I mean, really? it's kind of funny. Well, that's because they are. Yeah. They don't want anybody else being evil with them. I'm just saying. Well, yeah, they always they always represent opposite of what they really are. Have you noticed? Yeah, everything's upside down, and Cuz is asking. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. Right, Cuz is asking about these Google barges, um, and uh, yeah, uh, they have them, and and they came out in secrecy. They had them all wrapped up in this uh, netting to where you couldn't see, and they were saying, oh, "What are these barges for?" And da 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 da. Well, Google comes out with a little uh, uh, promo thing that that promotional thing that says, "Oh." these are for to allow people to come on and party uh, for our elite people and stuff and all and we're going to go partying on these boats well anybody <laughs> looking at them can c sort of figure out no that's not what uh, a luxury barge looks like you know that looks like a freaking uh, uh, facility of some sort and and the whole top of it is arrayed with antenna uh, which of course Google is communication, so of course they would they would have all of this, but um, yeah, they're massive. It looks, it looks like maybe it looks like a server farm or something that's divided into like separate pods, where you know each of these shipping containers and these containers are like you know what thirty five forty foot long. I mean they weren't small containers. Yeah. You know, you can put quite and a few use servers 40, in one 40 of containers. You have to have an air conditioning system, which 40 containers on one of those ships, that's what it was. No, no. The containers were 40 feet long. There's hundreds of them Grab on cat, there. That's what it was, 40 You know, I, I seen one of the videos that said okay, there were about yeah, 40 yeah. containers on there. Wow. Well, uh, if you're going to yeah. fit 5,000 people, they're not going to fit in 40 containers. Well, think about that. I mean, you got... Okay, let me think for a little bit here. Uh, 40 by, say, what, 8 foot wide, 10 foot wide? Let's say 10 foot wide. So you've got 40 foot by 10. You've got 400 square foot a piece times... 40, which is 116,000 16, square feet. Is that what it came out to? 400 times 40, 1,600, 16,000. 1,600 square feet. No, it's got to be more than that. Well, I'm not getting my calculator. My right I'm not. Out. Yeah, and I'm not getting the calculator <laughs> out because it'll mess with the with the sound even more, and I'm not going to do it in my head either. But uh, cuz <laughs> is but saying. Anyway, it's a fair cause amount. Of, it's a fair amount is of space, saying, But yeah, it's not going to fit five thousand people. It's right, not going to fit five thousand people. Cuz is saying, okay, she says one twenty by eighty is one hundred and sixty thousand, but she says the bunker barges are eighty feet by 120 feet bunker barges and what's a bunker barge cuz see this is more of what we oh flat topped okay uh, yeah these are flat top barges and they have these containers uh, stacked like four uh, deep you know uh, and I don't know how many wide uh, they are but see, they're my all idea. attached my idea that I mentioned last night was, you know, like the, the container motels that they have over in Japan. Or, you know, what they call the cube motels. Um, it's basically, it's a motel that's constantly changing its outside shape because you're constantly adding and taking away cubicles. You know, say you want to open a business, you buy 10 cubes, you rent the space, you attach them to the building, and there you go. You know, hopefully you don't forget to pay your rent and they come and take the cubes and you're swinging out in the middle of the air somewhere. Well, and, and there's another thing that we could consider, uh, like with the, uh, um, okay, I'm going to be adding Tam Tammy Peppermint on, uh, 
going to be bringing her on shortly. But Kat, why don't you uh, talk to us about the the uh, video that that you showed me today uh, as to what Google X is all about? This could be what they're for. Well, the, this young kid on this YouTube that a friend of mine from Australia flicked over to me um, was quite interesting. Uh, this kid goes on about the, everybody's curiosity of what uh, Google X is about, and he said there are five facts, and I, I can't remember, I didn't even write them down either, the five facts, but one kind of really jumped out at me because we, um, was it yesterday, we were all talking about uh, the possibilities of what these uh, barges are. They certainly do not look like any party barge at all. I mean, guys, this is a multi-million dollar company, and if you're going to have a party barge, why not just go buy your own cruise line ship, you know? Because what do those hold, about 3,500 people, you know? So uh, all those antenna-like things and poles sticking up... Um, we were wondering if perhaps uh, they were like floating antenna arrays or definitely some kind of communication where those antennas or whatever that is has to do with some kind of uh, form of electricity perhaps or signals or something. Something that just doesn't look quite right. And as this young man and with these five facts, there was um, one that really stood out, and it was one of the projects, because this, this young kid was going on about how uh, everything is really secretive about Google X. Not even some of Google's employees know about this level of security. And uh, is one of the projects now, when everybody tries to be hush-hush, who knows how things slip now? <laughs> uh, this kid says they'd have this project loon. Um, there was another project behind that, but I can't remember what that was. Um, but this project loon is to let go of these balloons into the atmosphere, and they're carrying these little devices that flow into this like um, electrical atmosphere, so we can all get like better communications and better internet and different ways to help us all out and something didn't rest with that quite so well either and they were showing these balloons and this and a few designs and i've saved that link but it's very it kind of started to add into a few other things that um uh, me and patty were talking about because uh, a, a while ago, uh, a friend of mine discovered something up on Google Earth, and it's where you can look around your map area in a 90 degrees and see your total surroundings, right? Well, there was a holographic image that was um, sitting up in the clouds, and this young girl had discovered it just playing around on Google Maps, and so we all were looking at it, and it looked like a holographic image of, like, Jesus Christ with this world. Probe. It was kind of fuzzy, but it looked like just coming out of the clouds. And as I got scoping around in a 90-degree angle, you could see all these little aliens, uh, round disks through the clouds, and uh, as if this big uh, phenomenon of uh, displaying holographic images and this the theory of the fake alien invasion. Well, you know, what better way to pull something of that off now watch me really get in trouble but if they floated these antenna arrays out in areas that you could make this massive and make it like a giant um, game and, and look what they've done with our society so far it's just like all the kids are geared they'd be like the perfect employees for this wouldn't they and here they float these balloons up here with these little gadgets, which who knows what they are. I can't, I, I have a hard time with uh, balloons are going to help us with the internet. But um, <laughs> Well, what know, they are they is satellite uh, uh, links. They're linking to satellites and they're going, they're, they're sending these parachutes up in the upper atmosphere so that everybody, no matter where you are on Earth, can have uh, internet. 
that's what it's supposedly for. Right. Um, yeah. S supposedly. Yeah, it's Wi-Fi. Yeah. But it. It's floating Wi-Fi supposedly. Right. But that stuff is, is impeding our own frequency. It acts as an ohm. That that acts as a resistor in between our frequency, and that's why they have to maintain the structure that they have. Exactly. Good exactly. Point, well, it it works exactly the same with the uh, the chemtrails and nanoparticles that turn you into a giant antenna to transfer Smart the magnetic meters. field from the ground through your body to the magnetic field in the sky and if they use that as a carrier they can plant whatever they want into your head and if they've got the little wi-fi broadcaster well, sitting up there it makes it even easier yeah i'm done right and, and a lot of it is the irritation that they're promoting through their kinetic energy through the 60 cycle energy 50 cycle energy tesla they're running not out where you don't even suspect it normally on a large farm where there's a lake nearby and they're bouncing it off of the lake and irritating whole cities, whole towns, whole villages and creating and maintaining the criminal rates because they're irritating the heck out of people using RF frequency and RF technology. Now they do the same thing in court. They have a little RF tower right there at the, the uh, court bench right there to irritate you. That is why the attorneys are wearing wool suits. It absorbs RF frequency. That's why the judge is wearing that robe or the dress. It's wool. He's absorbing our frequency. So when you go into court and they make you look like you're a nutball, that's because they're irritating you using our technology, and they have been for a very long time. But that's the game of politics. That's well, guys, how they get you to act out. Um, we're going to take a really Ooh, short wee. break. We're going to take a really short break because my daughter has picked this time of all times to start calling. And if I don't go to a break and call her back, she is going to continue calling. Uh, and then I'll be forced to drag her onto the bus. And uh, she doesn't like it when I do yep. that. So, yeah, we're going <laughs> to... Under the bus. Yeah. Under the bus. Under the, yeah. under the bus. No, not under. We pull people on the bus. We don't put them under the bus. <laughs> we don't do that. Um, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to go and we're going to play a little Leonard Skinner. There you go. And we will be right back. And uh, we have been joined also by Bo of Bo Knows Entertainment. Hey, Bo. And we'll be back with Tammy and Bo uh, very shortly. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, what is the name of our show? <laughs> what We Don't Know. This is the What We Don't Know show. Uh, the reason why we called this uh, the show this tonight is there are so many things that we need to put out there that you don't know, that you've never conceived, that you've never thought about, but that are so important into uh, becoming the individuals, the beings that you should be. Uh, remembering who and where you come from, that's what it's all about. And all of us have been struggling for a very, very long time to find the answers to these questions. How do we get back to who we truly are? Uh, what we were truly meant to do? We have those answers now. In fact, not only do we have the answers, we have the solutions. But because many of the listeners out there have not heard this, and I want to stress so very much that what you hear tonight needs to be passed on. It needs to be put out there in every venue, in any venue. The word needs to go out. Tell your children, tell your schools, tell your churches, wherever you go. Put it out there. Put it on the web. Put it on the internet. Put it in the newspaper. You know, these things can be done. The information that you need uh, is at hand. You can put your hands on it. You can read it. You can understand. And that's why we brought Tammy on tonight and Bo, because they are at the front of the battle that has been won. This is the hard thing for us to understand, is that the battle has already been won. And uh, so I'm just going to turn it over to Tammy. Tammy, um, what we're talking about is uh, taking back our power, taking back the right of our uh, of each one of us to be as we see, uh, as we want to be, 
uh, not as we are coerced or manipulated into being. Taking back our children's minds, taking back the future for our children. It all begins, and it all began, the, the, the step that we needed was actually done, when was it? You, you began in June of, of this year, was it? And, and uh, finally, was no, it in actually, August? Go ahead. Right, we actually started last October, uh, just prior to October, but October is when it really kicked up. And um, we started poking on them because they were going to react, and we let them react, and we laid down and we took it so we could evidence what they were doing. And then each time, you know, we're, we put on record, are you sure you know what you're doing because this is called this or this is called that. And they did it again with knowledge and intent the next time, and that is the elements required to find one guilty by the evidence. With knowledge and intent, you continued to harm. And that's something that Jesus was trying to teach everybody, and I need to go into that for everybody to realize these things. Now, everybody's been walking along in innocence. They've been following policy. They've been po following procedure. They've been educated and indoctrinated by this criminal enterprise. And in this, a lot of us, and including me, I was a child advocate feeding kids into that system at one time. I was a psychologist feeding people into the system. I was a sociologist studying the people in the system. And in that, I was innocent. I had no, absolutely no intent to harm. You know, what I thought I was doing was helping humanity. And in that, that is what Jesus meant by forgiveness. You have to forgive yourself. Not them. You have to forgive yourself because you have been walking along in innocence. You had no clue what you were doing. The majority was by trick and deception. And the first absolute is that you forgive yourself. The second part of this is that you're going to find yourself. You are going to know who you already are. Not what you can be or should be or ought to be or could be or otherwise would be. But you need to find out who you are. And in that you will find that in your being is who you are. If you're great at cooking pie, you're great at cooking pie. If you're good at walking, sitting, thinking, um, contemplating, meditating, that's what you are. You don't have to be anything other than that. That is what makes you happy. Happiness is not something to strive for. It's something that already is. It sneaks up on you in your state of being. And, and for so long, Everybody has been trained and trained and trained and indoctrinated to seek happiness. I could be this if I only do this, or I could do this if I only do this. They were selling you those keys by which to be and telling you what to be, what you could be, what you should be, what you ought to be, what you otherwise would be someday without ever realizing that you already are. You don't have to seek the title of being homosexual or bisexual or straight or black or white or gray or purple or any any other concept. They sell you those concepts so that they can sell you the rights and benefits that go with those concepts. And that is how you've been moved forward and sideways and back and forth, back and forth for so long. That is the action of commerce and navigation. You're being transported. You've always been transported by the same criminal actions. And now, the way, now that they're being helped. I was just so going to say, again. I was just going to say, and, and the, the real kicker of this is, is it's been going on for a very, very, very long time. Uh, each age has, has been subject to the same type of slavery and manipulation just technology affords better control as we go along better lies uh better absolutely uh, they got yeah. better at it exactly they, exactly they got better and better at they got better and better at human trafficking because their education was increased so they would find a new niche to to exploit and then they'd sell it to us, and they'd make more and more and more and more money off of our backs. And this has been going on forever. I mean, this is the whole aspect of polycratis. Politics stems from the word polycratis, which means uh, to control or possess many. Poly means many. Kratis means to control or possess. So politics, the game of politics, is simply a form of controlling and possessing many. And it all depends on the titles that we take up. 
If I call myself a female, they can sell me feminism. Well, how did they sell me feminism? They said that the guy was the bad guy when it's lawmakers saying that I can't vote, or lawmakers saying that it's lawful to kill me, or law lawmakers sanctioning whatever. That was never the male doing that. And it's the same thing when they employ masculism. It wasn't the female doing that. You know, they've had a really good long run of the same show forever. These, these jesters, that's what attorneys used to be known as, is court jesters. In, in Black's Law Dictionary, the court process is called negotiorum gestio, and the, the attorneys called negotiorum gestor, still to this day, they're just the same fools wearing the silly hats and the little pointy shoes, and all they do is put on a show by which to sell us things. And part of that, when you buy into it, that's partaking from the tree of knowledge. You're participating in this. That's what the tree of knowledge is. You're buying all of these concepts that never existed. You already are before they tell you, you know, oh, you have a penis now. Okay, now you have a vagina. Things, these con concepts are the way of trick and deception. Words are the way of trick and deception. Language itself is the way of trick and deception because normally in our natural being, our state of being, we communicate by frequency. Every word that we speak, in English, Latin, Spanish, Italian, French, whatever, we're moving ourselves around and about by description, description, to write about. And now instead of being, we're being written of, and we're remembering ourselves in the past. We're never in the present tense. Always striving to be. If you're always striving to be something, you're always in the past tense looking forward. You're never in the relative state of being. And that's what they took away from you. They took yourself. And and then, for those of us who may have figured it out and said, hey, this is wrong, they set up a system that looks on the face of it as if it was a system that we could use to, to garner justice for the injustice done against us. But all it was was another step into the shackles another step into losing ourselves a little bit more and giving it, it up to the system the way they set this up oh. is 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 perfect you know uh, you talk about problem reaction solution they got it covered uh, they they sell you a bill of goods and then when you find out the bill of goods is no good and you get angry about it then they say oh well here's where you affect your cure but it's not where you affect your cure it's where you step in and put the knee boots on and then by the time you're out of there you got the hip boots on you know and and before right. you're out of it you are completely uh, uh, inundated you know there's no way out absolutely and all of those names and titles, uh, they start out with calling us male and female, and then they sell us the rights to come with that. Well, at this point in time, is the most critical for everybody to realize that diagnoses are another form of titles. So if you're called bipolar and you run in there, or if you're called schizophrenic and you run in there, or ADHD, ADD, or whatever, you are diagnosing yourself, you're taking up another title, and they're cashing in on that title. But they're the ones that implicate the force to give you that title. The, the word depression means to press down upon. It means of pressure. So it means that you're being pressed down upon, not that you're reacting. That's the action of being pressed down upon. That's what the governing force is doing. And within that action, it's called fourth generation warfare. They're the ones imposing the financial pressures on you. They're the one imposing the psychological pressures, criminal pressures, all of these different political, economic pressures. They're the ones that control all of that. Congress controls the IMF, which controls the scarcity of all known uh, currency across the globe. They're, they control the economic pressure. And within their little uh, commercial units, which, e which is each county, they're controlling the psychological pressure. They're making sure that if you need to be traumatized, they're going to kill your dog, or they're going to kill your cat, or they're going to go worse and kill your mom, or your dad, or your, your daughter, or your son. They're going to put that pressure on you, and that is the action of insurance. You know insurance is something else, but insurance means to make sure things happen. Insure. And so when you are insured, like you have uh, house insurance or fire insurance, your house is guaranteed to burn down. They're going to burn it down 
because they cash in on that. If you get life insurance, you're going to be killed by them because they cash in on the other side of that. And it, exactly. from birth to death, they're cashing in on your body. Well, you know, um, me and my cousin uh, and my family, uh, we fell into the, to the trap. Uh, they had us thinking that the land was separate from us. And that they, uh, that somehow we had to, because they stole our land, they killed our families, uh, they imprisoned our families, uh, our families gone through great suffering uh, for the land, quote, that was patented and granted to, to our family. Uh, and, and our family has fought for over a hundred years now uh, to, to get this land back uh, with no avail. We've never been able to get right. anywhere with it. And I talked to you one day, and I thought, you know, I heard you talk, and I said, I'm going to ask Tammy. Tammy will know how I can get this land back. And when I talked to you, you said something to me that totally floored me, Tammy. It, it, it shut me down. It, it made me sit back and say, what? Because you told me, you know, you, you can't do that. You can't get the land back. You know, and I'm like... What the frick do you mean I can't get the land back? Uh, but you're absolutely not in that right. Way. Right. Uh, no, because we are the way. land. Right. Exactly. Right. The, the letters patent was on the human being. And so exactly. every time you ran out and got a mortgage or you purchased your property or whatever and you did a deed in your name, the assessed value is called the spread on what you have to cover by your productive value. So every time you're going out and getting a mortgage and say it's worth $170,000, you are creating the spread in between a hedge fund and an insurance. That's the spread that you have to cover with your productive value. So if you are, are on welfare, okay, the, the worst case scenario, say you're on Social Security or welfare, you have $170,000 spread to cover. They have to cover that not by your earning capacity, but by your capacity as a medical um, instrument or a psychological instrument or a criminal instrument. So they're going to enter you into the medical industry, criminal industry or psychological industry to extract that assessed value, which is a spread they have to cover after they assess that value. And that's the most disgusting aspect of all of it because that's bottom line, not only human trafficking, but that goes into genocide. And it's blatant genocide. This is all in their words. This is all in their works. Every bit of this. Right. And now... Um, hey, Tammy. Go ahead. Oh, can, I, can I just throw something in here? Hey, I was uh, uh -huh. showing the document to a friend of mine. And I had him read through the, the, the genocide one. And when he got done, he's like, well, that's it. It's all over. It's a done deal now. And I'm like, yep, pretty much. Right. But then, like, two minutes right. later, we were talking about the uh, secession for the counties in Northern California. And he says, oh, Obama's coming up here, and he's going to fire them and all that. And, and I'm like, we well, can't really do that. And I'm like, you no, know, I'm going to say because of this to. judgment. And he's like, nope, he's the president. He's the president. He can do what he wants and blah, blah, blah. And he had just well, no, they, read the document. They can't. It's, it's there's a disconnect. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you have to realize what the word secession means. And and Texas was trying the same thing. Secession actually means to take over estates. So when the when the sheeple and I'm sorry to use that word, but that means falsely led sheep. When the sheeple are crying, yes, we want to secede. We want to secede. That means we want you to take over my estate. That's what the sheeple are screaming for as citizens. They need to go to Black's Law Dictionary and look up the definition of secession because secede means to take over estates. So when you're voting or, or electing to have them secede, that means they're seceding you, your estate. And so you, you don't want to allow that to happen. You don't want to consent to those things. So and that's... sick. They, yeah, and, and here's the, here's the well, deal, is that uh, they have set it up in such a way 
that the language that we use and the court system, the way it's set up, uh, the fact that they, they have this we the people thing, um, all of this leads us to believe that we are in somehow, in some way, in charge of what's going on, that we have the power to affect uh, change. Well, you do now. Well, yes, but not in their venue. But now we are, like you said, you have, you have gone before Congress. You won. We have taken that first giant step. We are there now. How do we convince people that we are there? Right. They have to realize and they have to stop consenting. First of all, don't secede you over to California. <laughs> you know, first, don't do that. Don't do those things, you know. Um, you have to realize right now your authority and realize immediately what a citizen is because if you're a citizen you're electing by the doctrine of election to either seek a right or a benefit never ever ever your inheritance never your inheritance you can have one a right or one a benefit but you'll never get both under the doctrine of elections so if you're electing to be a citizen they're going to raise you on one side and offer you a a, a nice smile on the other side and so you have to realize that first that if you are a citizen of that that entity and and it, it is an entity it's a corporation congress went bankrupt in 1933 everything was taken over by corporate governance that was established in 1802 with the indemnification convention and created and maintained with each state constitution which are enablement acts those are acts of enablement enabling the national state which is a corporate state to come in and govern just in case well just in case happened in 1933 that's when all of the human beings were placed in holding corporations as negotiable instruments to discharge congressional bankruptcy under corporate government and you've been there since and if you are electing to be a citizen that means you're electing to be a product of the corporation you can't be a citizen of a corporation that's another well, yeah that's another thing because I tried to explain I, I tried to explain to him one day that he's a living being and he's not a corporation and he's like no no I am a corporation and I just like okay and I walked away but I, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm getting a bunch of copies of your judgments printed up and I'm going to be handing them out to people so that they can take it home and read it. And I have one local right, cop in town. Right, the administration Yeah, he's pretty aware of some of the things that are illegal that are going on. And he's basically a cop simply because, you know, it's a job. And he basically stated to me one day, he's like, you know, if these guys think that I'm going to go around and kick in doors and take guns away from people... They got another thing coming. They can have their badge back and choke on it. And he actually right. and is friends with one of the guys that. who's... Well, this guy is. I mean, I, I like him. Now, we also but in, he's actually good friends with case, the guy who is promoting... Hold, hold on a second. He's, he's friends with the guy who is promoting the secession for the counties in Northern California. And I'm right. going to be getting so them the documents, and I'm going to try to get them... To wake up a little bit and see, you know, there's a different way to go about doing it. It's already done. Right, it is done, and the, and the right, thing but is, see, is that we did protect those. We did protect the cops. We t we protected law enforcement because what happened years ago is they started hiring cops that had very very low IQs. And now I'm not degrading cops. I'm not degrading cops. My my biggest fear was that they would cannibalize the law enforcement immediately and that was something that I did not want and something that we prepared for and we put it directly into this case that the cops are puppets for attorneys now when you go to their case law and, and all of this stuff that they have agreed upon including the, the uh, Supreme Court they have issued orders stating that cops are not to have an IQ over 110 they're they're maintaining minions right. And so if, you, if you're if you a cop, if you want to be a cop and you go take a test, you fail their test, that means that you have an IQ higher than what they require. And the saddest thing is that they have to require that low IQ so that those human beings can be manipulated by attorneys. And we, we put a stop to that inside of this case. Because we watched Dorner, we watched him get murdered. He was burned alive. 
when they caught him out. And all he did was went up against yep. him as a cop. When yep. he realized what his peers were doing, what his yep. handlers were doing, what the administration was doing, and what the FBI was doing, he turned on him and he said, hey, wait a minute, that's not going to happen. And they chased him down like a dog and they killed him to shut him up. Right. Now, that's not going to happen anymore. Well, I do like not this, like collateral damage. It, right. And like this, this local officer, you know, he, he works for the sheriff's department. And I've had conversations with him on a few different occasions. And one of these times I was talking to him about, uh, well, you don't need a driver's license if you're not doing commerce. And, and explained a little bit. And he looks at me says, yeah, I know. I'm like, really? Okay, well, will you write an affidavit saying that, you know, that's what it is and sign it? And he's just laughing. He's like, I'm trying to get my job back. I'll never get a job again. Because, you know, honestly, there's not that many jobs out here. But, I mean, he does understand some of the things that are going on. And, uh, like I said, if I can get some of these people this paperwork, they'll understand that they don't have to go through this whole secession thing. You know, all they have to do is present no, this and say, we don't want to be a part of that system. Yeah. Right. And the, and the secession, again, secession actually means, and it's an attorney putting on this secession thing. It's an attorney, it's a bunch of psychologists, and it's the CIA pushing and promoting this um, secession thing. All of these secession things. Secession means you're giving up your state because it means they're going to take it over for you. If you would like to do that, then go ahead and vote or elect it. But I, I urge you not to do that. You don't want to give up your estates. If you go back to the 1600s, the way that this game has been maintained is that Congress came in and seceded everybody's estates and have been holding on to them, waiting for the heir to show up ever since and laughing their asses off as they human traffic human beings. Now, you don't want secession. That happened back in the 1600s. Right. That's where your, your estate was taken over by Congress, your transgressor. That's how it happened. They well, said, we'll hold within, on to this for you. It's all stupid within, sheeple. It's all within the corporate maritime structure, and you just want to get out of that structure, not go to a different position within it. Because you're still screwing Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's the game of chess. Now, when you go to the dialogue on the exchequer, that's what this is. It's a chess game. You're on the chess board until you rise above it and realize, wow, I'm the God. I am God. I'm the Father. And once you realize you, who you are, you are God. They taught you, God, that you were not so that you would patronize the Lord God, which is a demigod. They, they all worship Marduk, Baalism, the action of Baal. We all need to realize this. And once you realize that you are God, and that's what Jesus is trying to tell you so often, know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. And he kept coming in. First or Second Corinthians 13, he's pretty much yelling. He's like, I, I've come to you twice before. This is the third time. Come on, get your heads out of your asses. And it was so interesting because he's, he's sitting there and he's screaming at everybody, please wake up, please wake up, please wake up. Don't be sheeple, don't be sheeple. And the, the people, the sheeple, actually let him be crucified by casting lots. They all took up names. And they all said, well, no, man, I'm, I'm a Roman, and, and I don't want to hang around with that Christian dude over there. And I'm a Jew. I don't think that I should be hanging around with you Muslims or anything. And at that point in time is when you're allowed to be crucified. You're separated by nomenclature. Everybody needs to drop those names, realize that they are I am, they are God, and act accordingly. That's your obligation. This is the resurrection. So resurrection means when you're able to stand again. What happens now with the birth certificates? Did you oh, catch that? Say that again. What happens now with the birth certificates? What happens with oh, the they were offset by the attorney. They were offset by the attorney. What happens is because everything's on a spreadsheet, that cell number, you have to put another number in there. And in August, what happened was um, all that time from October of last year, we were asking a judge to show up. We were looking for a judge. We never found a judge. And so in August, 
After all that time of searching for them, they were lost at sea. We had no other option than to declare them dead under 38 U.S.C. 108. And what that means is that they're now discharging congressional bankruptcy. That's how they were getting away with doing what they were doing to you, is that you were always presumed dead. Well, the presumption of death is overcome. If they send you a summons and you answer a summons, you're saying, I'm dead. Only the dead can answer a summons. And so that you were overcoming that presumption and declaring yourself at that point in time dead. And then again, if you weren't summoned into court, you were going out and signing mortgages. A mortgage means dead pledge. You were saying on a mortgage, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Go ahead and take over my estate, run with it, do whatever you want to me. I'm good yeah. with everything, right? Yeah. Well, now, and now that stopped. They were declared dead in August, and that's what shifted everything over. Is that, and, and you're seeing it now, prior to the time that they were declared dead, or it's called civilly dead, um, prior to that time, an attorney could only be sanctioned. It could only be slapped on the hand and told, don't do that again whatever else. Well, now they can be charged. Their estates are being charged for their repair. That's the bottom rebond. That was what your birth certificate was. It created right. a bottom rebond. Now they're in that placement. You're no longer there. They're in that placement. As long as you're not contracting as a citizen, then they're in that placement. You're not in that placement any longer. Okay. okay. So if I I wanted to purchase a vehicle. Uh, I would. How do I go about I doing that? I mean, is there a way to do that through the account? Because there was people were doing that before. Right. Right, and and that's no, no, no. We don't do any EFTs or anything. Your your money's coming right now is when they first started producing. So what happens is what they did was they stole all of the monies out of the treasury. They were supposed to be putting 90% of that back. They were taking 90% of that. And so the treasury, they've drained it, saying, oh, we're taking care of them. We're repairing all these vessels. Look at all of these diagnoses, you know, and they got everybody to rush out to the doctor and be diagnosed. Your diagnosis, everything under the sun, you know, and, and what they were doing was they were telling in the treasury we need more money we need more money they're crazy they're all crazy they're nuts they're beating the hell out of each other they're killing each other they're stealing each other's stuff and and rolling through stop signs oh my gosh i need more funding well what they had done is they just destroyed everything they were just sucking it dry and never putting anything back but the house of lords were under the presumption that all of us were out here we're just nuts and crazy because they have their clergy up there speaking these things during a, a presidential ad address that presidential address, address to Senate, address to Congress, those addresses are bills of address. They're billing the Treasury and saying, look, we got a bunch of nutballs here. Look, we need help with birth control or whatever else they've been doing in their presidential addresses. Those are bills. They were sending those bills to the Treasury and saying, we need more money, man. We need more money. And all of that time, they were embezzling out of the freaking Treasury. Because the original contract said that human beings were to be kept on general welfare. The treasury was going to pay for that. And they went off to the side with the 1777 uh, Articles of Confederation and said, no, fuck that. I'm going to charge and pledge them to offset my, my bankrupt states. We're not going to take care of him. I can cash in over here. And they've been doing that ever since. Right. Okay. Uh explain article 1 section 9 clause 3 um, is that the no bills of attainder or do I have that wrong right and that's the end of the document that original contract that Congress came in with with the Treasury with the House of Lords said that um, no bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed at article 1 section 9 clause 3 that means that's the end of the document everything after that they have used to raise humanity that's not part of the original contract with the Treasury. Right. They right. came in on the 14th Amendment. I mean, the 14th Amendment was the most disgusting. They came in on that one and said the corporations are the persons. And a citizen didn't get any rights. If you read that, citizens didn't get any rights. The person did. The corporation got your life. They traded the corporation for your life. 
And ever since then, you have been right. maintaining corporate right. welfare. That means you're keeping the corporations on welfare. Every time you go to the doctor and they kill you, every time you get arrested, every time you go into this uh, mental hospital or whatever else, that's called corporate welfare. You're drumming up revenue to maintain Donald Trump on welfare. Walmart on welfare. Well, not only that, I mean, we, we, not even that, we buy taxes, or we buy items, pay taxes, and then our taxes go back to the companies that we bought the products from in the first place. I mean, Absolutely. that's corporate welfare. It's, it's really, really, yeah, it's a great game, isn't it? But then now they're being, they're being yeah. held accountable for genocide. That is the action of genocide. They've been using human beings as product for the longest time. That is the action of genocide. That's the psychopath, which is not the human race. They are a devolved species. They don't have a frontal lobe. They have never been able to evolve. And that's why they play these games with us and use these laws on us. We're the greater intellect. We're God. They're demigods. Well, and you were, They're always yeah. seeking the self. And you were saying... And that's what makes them... Sorry. sorry. Say that again. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you were you were saying that uh, you know they were keeping two sets of books. You're talking about the Kaffir accounts. Well, not just the Kaffir the accounts CAFR. because you've got a federal state, right? The the CFR Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports. Those things are only for the national state. That doesn't include the federal state. There's two states. So you've got the federal state that's cashing in both ways. They're embezzling from the House of Lords, from the Treasury, and they're embezzling from the national state, which is each state, and then down into each county. So each county has been really struggling mm -hmm. to survive, and that's where they're coming up with ways through their law enforcement by which to take us. You know, each time they come up with a new product to take us with, you know, a different law, code violation or whatever else that's a way of, of scrambling around for money because the federal government is cashing in on it the national states are just working along and, and making you know what fifty thousand dollars a year why you got a congress member there in the, in the billions or a judge that federal judge that we had on our show uh last april he's a freaking king of borneo okay he owns borneo <laughs> and he's a federal judge here you know, you have to look at the comparisons between the federal state and the national state to see who is the actual director and perpetrator because a lot of the times the lesser knowns or the underlings administration have no clue what's going on. They're just scrambling for a buck. They're like little busy bees. It's the administration that you want. You want the federal administration, the board of governors, the... Um, uh, broadcasting board of governors and such as the CIA because those are the directors. Now, hold on, I got a question here. So, was that on the the show that you broadcast? He admitted he was one of the kings of Borneo? Because I, I must have missed that. Absolutely. Because I've always wanted to go to Absolutely. Borneo, but he if he's the king of Borneo, I ain't going nowhere near. Well, on that show, he actually admitted as a federal judge that he knew they were human trafficking. He admitted on air that he was right, human trafficking I, and selling his judgments. He was selling his judgments to China, and they thought they yeah, were really Hong funny Kong, right? this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, Singapore. He said Singapore. Yeah. yeah. Singapore. Okay. okay. Ridiculous. ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And Denny says the Board of Governors is not the CIA. Okay, Denny, the uh, CIA was created under the 1947 National Security Act, and just under the National Security Act, which was maintained by Congress, is the National Security Council. Underneath the National Security Council is the CIA. The CIA is the production company for the United States Incorporated, and the Broadcasting Board of Governors is just under that. Broadcasting Board of Governors, you can find at bbg.gov, and on there you'll see their actions, because the, in their about page, you know, the Secretary of State is their, um, uh, it's actually the clearinghouse, the one that offsets congressional bankruptcy. Well, the Secretary of State, of course, is John Forbes Carey. He's also a Broadcasting Board of Governors governor. And what they do is they maintain a great show, put on a great show, an illusion for everybody to see, 
by which to generate revenue using you, the human being. Yeah, it gets interesting once you start looking at, like, you know, okay, look at the top 40 corporations and who are, you know, the board of directors. You know, right. everything and, interlocks. And, you need to and go the CIA has got its fingers right. Right. everywhere. Right, and, and it's... Per when you go back into the church committee reports, book four, the supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence, in their own hand, they say that they are a production company. They produce intelligence, and that's what you're filled up with. As a human being, when you go through the educational system, um, that is known as pedagogy or attendance on boys, you're being filled up with artificial intelligence. That's what AI is. You are being maintained not as a human, but now you're called politically correct or a human resource or a test subject when you uh, talk about it in the medical industry. You're considered a test subject according to the Ethics Commission and the FDA agreements. And what's the saddest thing to see is that now young children are buying into this system female children are buying into this system they're going off and they're getting welfare and everything else when you go back to the inception of the national security act the inception of the national security council you find that in 1974 henry kissinger came in dr henry kissinger and he maintained in his memorandum 200 to the national security council that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy that means that you should be killed. That's the highest priority. One year later, in 1975, Dr. Henry Kissinger established the Office of Population Affairs. And you can go to the Office of Population Affairs.gov, and you will find that that is the Department of Health and Human Services. That thing is the depopulation program. It requires your consent. When you go and apply for its services, it then has control over you and your children. That's the thing that's going to kill you, and it's guaranteed to kill you because most of the time when you go to the Department of Health and Human Services, you believe that you are in need of medical services, and that is how you're entered into that system. You're consenting to that, so you've got to walk away from the Department of Health, Health, Health and Human Services, which is the Office of Population Affairs that Henry Kissinger created as a depopulation program. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we had Kissinger to be in there too, Kat. I see your comment. Yep. Yeah, you know Kissinger's in there. He's on the genocide dock because he's there's a leg. Sorry about that. Bo, go ahead. Patty had brought up how you know far this goes back, and I think I have a pretty good write up of it. Although I just need a typo, and there's some probably things I could fix it up a little bit, but. At any rate, the, the way I begin to picture this thing is that back in Rome, they had Senate. And it's the same thing today, only we have Congress. Sounds a little nicer, and it's basically the same entity. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those people are descendants of those people. You know what I'm saying? And... So it's just a long-running play that, you know, you can see how it was done through their laws. If you want to know the history, you have to read all the acts and the laws, the charters. But Tammy likes, you know, to point you towards the kind of the separation around 1100 to get you started. 1100, uh, the separation of spiritual and temporal. But, yeah, since the 1947 National Security Act, though, that thing has got its tentacles over the world, and that is, it has been, 
basically the entity I think that people refer to as the New World Order. So, yeah, I believe uh, Tanny talks to the, the hearts and minds, how they've been doing this over time. But if you look at like the original uh, 12 tables, just go look at the 12 tables. Back from, oh, that era of Rome, Tammy, is that about right? What was the date on the uh, 12 tables? I'll go get it right now. I, get, I don't remember. And the, what, 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 what you got to see in there is that the numeration corresponds to the same concepts that you see in title. Uh, of the U.S. Code, you know, and the UCC, the Code of Federal Regulations, etc., right? And if you look at four, for example, going back to the 12 tables that had to do with the state as your parent, parents, patri, patriae, and the UCC, you'll see the similar concept, and See, Title IV is, you know, that's about uh, the patriotism because it's got the flag in there. So anyways, what I'm getting right. at is every one of these codes, one through and nine, the same thing with all correspond right. to the same um, ideology, if you will. So there's evidence right there that what I'm talking about, these people being around for a while in Congress... Uh, it's just um, the same entity. That's a little bit of evidence there. Oh, Ravana said his battery is done. Oh, soon. Uh -oh. oh, you can still talk now? Yeah. He's on Where solar, are, so he, he's on solar oh. and he can only charge so much, but we can always call him back in by phone, huh? Can we do that, Ravana? Yeah. Yeah. I've got another couple minutes here, but if I drop off, just go ahead and give it a second and then call my cell. Or a minute, whatever. Yeah, we can do that. We really have no time limits tonight, guys, so, uh, uh, but I was following the, uh, conversation in the chat and everything, um, and, and, uh, you know, they, it doesn't matter where you go, what you look at, uh, where, what institution you're in, what agency. It doesn't matter what town you're in, what street you're in. It doesn't matter. It's all under the same control. Uh, the books you read, right. uh, th the movies you see, what, what the sermon is every Sunday at church. All of it is geared to push you like the herd in one direction or another. It's all manipulation. Everything that we've lived is a lie you know so we have to come from right. a totally different perspective of not even uh, relying on anything that we currently know about a, this system of government and society none of this works we have to throw it away we can't use it anymore uh, it's it's done it's broke uh, it, it's not broke as far as they're concerned. It's perfect. But to us, it, it is of no use. So we have to throw it away. We have to begin anew. And the way we have to do that is to continually get that information out. And I wanted to let Nisi know that she's asked for uh, your your uh, s uh, court case with uh, your win against Congress. And uh, I told her I would send her that. But when I, when I send it to you, send it to everybody you know. Uh, print it out if you can. Hold on, just okay. Uh, print it out if you can, and and just get it out there to anybody. If you know, talk to people on the street. Um, I just had a great idea. We have churches here that are uh, more than willing to loan their basement room, you know, uh, and and to to have talks and 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 things like this. I'm in a small town, but. Uh, you know, it might be a good idea to maybe put something like that on. And I'm sure there are places. We have a Main Street Park with with a uh, stage that we can use any time. Uh, every town has something to that effect in that town. The thing is, is that it, we've already we've already won. Uh, Tammy and Bo did the work, 
and people with them did the work. They went to Congress. They sued for human trafficking, and they won. They won the judgment. It's a done deal. Nothing, nothing can be uh, taken away. It's done. What we have to do as individuals, as beings, is stand up, say that we no longer want to be in that system that we recognize that we are beings with, with rights beyond that of any human being to give us. And, and uh, their laws authority. are not as good as authority, yes. And, and their laws have no bearing on us. Our laws must be of a spiritual and a stronger nature. We just can't come out of this and say, now I get to do what I... We have to change spiritually we have to change mentally no, and, and, and we have to change physically and that's, and, that's, and that's the beauty about that last order we said humans are known by their virtue and that means in their state of being by their actions and human being does not hurt itself the human being does not hurt each other it doesn't own each other the human being doesn't have those uh, concepts only the psychopath has those concepts and that's why there were, we had to separate the two beings in the order itself in the genocide doc because there is a, a dramatic and dra uh, drastic separation between the human being and the psychopath there is nothing in common between a human being and a psychopath they only look alike but the psychopath does not have a frontal lobe it, it cannot conceive of human emotion or compassion it doesn't have any human emotion kinda at like, all. It can pretend. Kind of like we're dealing. Kind of like we're dealing with the conscious and Seven unconscious, basically. Right, but but on a greater level, because the psychopath is actually um, what's defined as the effeminate male and the psychopathic female. They both have the same um, lack of impulse control. But the thing is, is that that thing is actually so vicious. Um, because of the lack of impulse control, when you put that in a male body that produces testosterone and norepinephrine, norepinephrine is the fight response. If there's no control on that response, that thing is Charles Manson. That thing is um, uh, Ed Dean. That thing is um, Eileen Warnos. That thing is somebody who can uh, drown all, all five of their children in a bathtub. Uh, like that uh, so-called woman in Texas a few years ago or drown their children in a, in a lake like Susan Smith. That thing is a psychopath. It doesn't have any human emotion. It's missing the frontal lobe, but it looks like us. It's not us. It's it's the devolved species. And And these are the people that we're dealing with. Right, and, right? and according to like research... Like the inbred... Right, and and that's what happened. They were trying to keep their their bloodlines pure and everything else. We we did not go to Congress. We went to, yeah, we got to Congress. We went to, we had to ever evidence the whole food chain, right? So we we went to the uh, county court, went to the state court, went to the federal court, and it was all the same. They do the same things under private acts and acts of commerce, uh, offsetting congressional bankruptcy under 28 U.S.C. 453, making you the negotiable instrument. So we had to evidence all that. We went to all of them. Then we went to, oh goodness, how do we work our way up to the food chain? But we got uh, essentially at one point, the United States District Court actually, the clerk actually said, yeah, okay, you're right, we're working for you. Now, and they started giving service. And we got a new clerk in there. And, um, you know, again, we get, we came up against the, uh, uh, you know, re resistance, so to speak, right? Right. Yeah. And that's what happened. The federal state yeah. came yeah. in. We got the, the the local clerk to work for the court, for the United States court. We were recognized as the court. And then the federal state came in and said, no, no, no. We, we don't want us to be in the shoot. 
and so they switched up the clerks of courts of course they quit working for us so then we had to condemn that court because a court only exists if there's a judge in it bound by judicial canon well our judge is bound by judicial canon it only sees evidence and rules accordingly it doesn't administer people it doesn't human traffic it doesn't perpetrate genocide it doesn't cash in on anybody that's what attorneys do well, our judge is not an attorney our judge is a judge well, that's what happened is is we kept saying, where's your judge? You have no court. They don't have a court. They have a convention center. If it's only a, a bunch of attorneys, that's a convention center. That is not a court bound by judicial canon. And finally, we had to go all the way up and we were recognized by the uh, House of Lords. We were understood by the United States Incorporated. We were understood by the United States of America, Congress, Senate, uh, House yeah, of Representatives, yeah, the IMF and on down the food chain. We got the IMF in the loop, the Lord, and, you know, the House of Lords, of course, the uh, UN. There was quite a bit of uh, communication, and everybody was that we could think of to notify. We we notified, and go to the website chooseyourside.org, and on the documents page, you can go to the authorized documents. It will be on a Dropbox. And you can download those documents. And just four documents, two small ones and two large ones. Uh, the latest one will be starting with LIC. That's for Low Intensity Conflict. That's the order on the genocide. And everything previous to that is in the package sent to the House of Lords in the other big file. And the other two files right now are, I believe, are Tammy's documents on the unique way she had to do her forgiveness, absolute document, and the appointment of the executor coming in under my house. You know, it's a little different than, you know, the way I did mine. So that's why we put those out there. Right, and, and that was... That was my, you know, my favorite part is because that's the original establishment of a bank. To have a bank, you have to have a deposit in it. And I put myself as a deposit in that bank and created a trust around every one of us as the United States. Because the minute we had the land, and that's what he had done, I gave him the land, which I'm the heir of, and I am, and from that point on is when our bank was actually established for the United States and the United States court. They're both, they're one in the same. And as we and, walked and, and through, we went all the way back. It, we, went, we went all the way back on that one, encountered the separation of the spiritual and temporal back to 1100. That's how far back we went on that. Or to the right. garden. And, and the garden of Eden. Right, all the way back to the garden, because what had happened at the garden, or the metaphor of the garden, is that the original bank was destroyed when the snake came in and offered Eve all of the little pretty treats and said, come over here, trust me, I'll give you what you want. And Eve went off with the other father. And what had happened here is that Eve stayed with Adam. Adam, actually, the word means man. So that, that maintains it. Yes, we're the son of man course and so we we had to facilitate the absolute trust and that's what happened we evidenced the absolute trust every time that they came up against me Bo came in and he smacked him back down and they kept coming up against me and Bo came in and he smacked him back down and instead of them praying on me which they were evidencing my executor took care of me that's the trust I trusted him to not allow me to be sucked into that system because remember I used myself, threw myself under the bus knowing though that he would be there to protect me and he always was the entire time because that's that's our origins, that's our nature, that is, that is human nature to protect each other. And that's the problem that we have today. We have all these people, most everybody is asking that confederacy the federal state to come and protect them and we see what they're doing 
by protecting us. Uh, corporate counsels handed down policy to these cops to do what they do, and you can see it. Uh, it's all very commercial, and they are using any means necessary, you know, allowed for by their letter of mark and reprisal and other private acts and acts of commerce. And, right. um, and, and that's something you know, that all sorts of problems with corporations that don't, you know, look out for humanity, like what may or may not be going uh, on in Fukushima due to what we know about the uh, CIA and the intelligence production. Back to you. Right, and, and when we evidence through the trust the actual walk of humankind, that's the, the Sestri K Trust, without being created as a fiction. When they came in in the 1600s and they seceded all of the estates, they took up their position as trustee, but it was all under trick and deception. They're not, they were never allowed to do that. On top of that, when, you, when everybody was going into court and going into that realm, you're depositing yourself into that bank as a special deposit. Well, from the side, they're tearing you apart. They're negotiating you and altering your condition. That is against the law of what a special deposit is and what a fiduciary relationship is. They were not even maintaining a any aspect of what they're defined as in any way, shape, or form. And so we evidence not only that we upheld the trust, but that they have absolutely abrogated that contract from inception. Yep. Don't get any clearer than that. The pirates. That's why they are seeing Title 46, Chapter 311, 313 now on what you might refer to as the paperwork. So, right. right. Yeah, from and, start and to Danny's finish, it's been asking, quite a ride here. Danny was asking if we um, showed that in court. Yes, what happens is Jesus had instructed us in First Corinthians thirteen to lay down and take it. He said the female is not to own anything. She's supposed to suffer, bear all things, witness all things, believe all things. But the number one rule is to trust. Faith, hope, and charity equal trust. So I laid myself open and naked, and I let them do whatever they wanted to do to me, knowing that Bo was going to come in and protect me. Those were the rules of the game. That is, that, that's a game book. The entire thing is, is the first part, the Old Testament is their manifest, that's how they take you, that's how they create in your mind all of these concepts, and the second, or the New Testament and Jesus' walk is our game rules. As long as we follow that rule book, and we don't change anything, as it says in Revelation, then everything falls into place like it is now. You know, it's just knowing what that book is, and that's what it says in Revelation. When you're able to open their book, then your wrath is made known, and you're witnessing that now. That's what Bo just handed down. You know, his wrath said, you know, you, you guys are screwed, and I'm really sorry, but you chose your form of government, and psychopathy is not to be protected, and it will not be tolerated any longer. Yeah. I think, okay, uh, she wants to know what court Denny wants to know. Today. Well, what happened was we started in uh, St. Joseph Superior, went up, went up into USDC uh, District Federal Court, and then after that we were recognized as a court called the United States Court after they were condemned by their own actions because they, they were not maintaining a judge there. They only had attorneys there. Yeah, the United States court, all lowercase, because we're not able to be capitalized upon as we have found and evidenced by the evidence that the Bretton Woods agreements were unlawful on their face to be used against humanity. 
That's when you were capitalized on as a productive value. Yeah, so the course um, is not really what you're being taught they are. We evidence that too, I think, which is, I think, some of the more uh, studied and interested uh, folks out there will probably appreciate the. the Oops, you know, sorry, the, guys. The There's huge be... jump we made in our, you know, comprehension of the court. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I forgot about calling Rav and having his ringtone. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, Bo, I didn't, need, I didn't mean to interrupt. Let me see if I can get him to answer. If not, I'll hang up again. It's live radio. What can I say? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hang it up. It's uh, the Baldi, so. you know. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. I love, I love the Valdi. Anyways, he's yeah, not he, answering, huh? No, he. I'll call back in a minute here. Maybe we'll go to a little break or something. But um, yeah, he plays that. We, we always uh, say when I call him, I always tell people, "All right, uh, curtsy and take your partner." <laughs> We're getting ready to dance. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I think Denny has another question. Or a, a comment that she's going yeah, to... Yeah, can you talk? That's, uh, Denny? Oh, yeah. Can... Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm trying not to talk when everybody else is talking. <laughs> uh, I do have some questions. And, um, so you answered the court question. The issue I have is, um, if you are your own court, then what court is going to recognize you, any court you go into. And if that's so, then is this a foundational case that people can use to jump off and form their own court? Yes. I guess what I'm asking is, um, who is going to entertain your emotions or your, um, well, your entries? We were understood. If, if there are, we were understood. If, if there are no courts. In existence. I mean, if there are no right. courts in existence and you have to form it yourself, then what what is going to um, be there? Well, for what they did. A lot of people. Okay. We're living in I mean, You have to go back to, to. Right, and you, you have to go back go to ahead. the yeah. reality of everything. Is it? Congress has been found guilty of genocide, okay? Congress has been found guilty by its own actions of being a criminal enterprise, okay? The court system that you know in the United States Incorporated was created by congressional action. That court system created by the 1789 Judiciary Act was a criminal enterprise on its face. That is what the Internal Revenue Service is, is that function, that court that they set up, because it drives revenue into the original 13 colonies. So when you read the 1789 Judiciary Act, you'll see on there that if you show up to court like in um, Spokane County, Washington, on November 2nd or the second week in November, you're actually appearing in court in Maryland or Massachusetts or Pennsylvania. That is where those revenue streams are going. And that is what the Internal Revenue Service is. It's a service to promote and generate internal revenue through those original 13 colonies. Now, going all the way back to those original 13 colonies, Congress came in and said, I am the original 13 colonies. And then on the other side, it said, I'm the representation to the original 13 colonies. And I'm going to shake my hand now and do this deal so I can protect them. The whole thing was a fraud on its face. So in October, what had happened was we've been establishing the court for, you know, all of this time. And throughout, we condemned their court condemn their court again and then by August or October we were understood understood they understand our jurisdiction that means we have jurisdiction over them they understood us in October there is nobody else on this planet with planetary jurisdiction or global jurisdiction except for the United States court 
Yeah, so everybody probably needs to go and read the 1789 Judiciary Act. You know, I, I know it doesn't sound like the thing you want to read, you know, b before you uh, doze off to sleep at night, but what they did in that was the premise of all these uh, courts today, which have evolved more into a type of star chamber with different variants. So if you wonder what's going on in the court, it's because here we have all these people that are just letting them do it and they're not holding them accountable for harming humanity essentially. But that's the way it was programmed. For the that's the way it was programmed. That's yeah. you know, it's running just fine. Uh, that that's the one thing that I even before I understood uh, and I don't you know there's so much that I need to learn that Tammy and you have brought to us but um, I used to think that I always knew that uh, there are a bunch of nuts and psychopaths running the country uh, and I always knew that that it wasn't right and I always knew that uh, I wanted to change it but I never knew if I would ever change it, never thought about, you know, yeah, I, I'd love to change it, but that's as far as it went, because it's it's daunting to think that you have to change a government, but you don't have to change a government. You just have to forget about it. You have to create the correct uh, uh, authority. Is that what I'm? Is that? Well, correct? and what we did was, well, no, not really, because what we did was we evidenced it in its criminal actions. So I threw myself under the bus and let it pummel me. I let it do whatever it was going to do. And then by that, on court record, we evidenced what it was doing. We evidenced on court record that it was preying on me in writing in its own hand. And at one point in August, when, when that judge came in, uh, the federal judge, the, the one that condemned the federal court, he came in and said there's a proper way and an improper way to human traffic human beings on court record in his own hand and he signed this thing and said yep I'm human trafficking yep we're human trafficking I have an oath to Congress yes 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 and what would cause him to make that statement wow yeah what would cause him to make that statement and we he thought he was that off. powerful oh well, yeah. And, and, yeah we and, pissed him off real yeah, and and that's the whole rule. The rule is is that if they're all they know is their titles, all they know is I'm a big shot. I have I have a dress on, or I have a nice suit on, or whatever. Or I have a nice car. All they know is are those titles. And and the most beautiful thing, you know, as most people know, I'm a game theorist. And so if I want in a reaction, I'm going to create an action to get that reaction and we went in when we first started going in here we are uh, last October and you know I wanted to take Stewart to the side and, and get him off to the side because he's a, a freaking federal attorney you know and he's working on behalf of the federal government and here we are in you know local podunk court and this bank is coming in trying to foreclose and everything else well the bank is of course the court itself well this attorney um, you know, we, we put down everything that we wrote in October, including that he's treasonous and everything else. On top of that, uh, we misspelled his name three times. Three times. Just a misspelling, just to say it a little bit different, like um, instead of Stewart, we did Stewart, you know, just slightly off. And he came raring to go and admitted that he was treasonous, but not treasonous to the bank. My favorite was Seawar. Yeah, Seawar. And um, the, that was the neatest aspect of the whole thing. You just invoke their title. That was the game they were playing against humanity. They would bring you into court and say, you're a bad mom, you're a bad dad, you're a bad taxpayer, you're a bad employee. And all of this time, what do you do? You defend the title. So when we turned that around on them and said, well, okay, I'm just going to misspell your name. And that's been the funnest part for me the whole time because just now, this last week, um, I accidentally uh, put a Y in a Board of Commissioner's name. Uh, what was it? Striker or something. And I put a Y there instead of an I. Well, he 
not only sent back the receipt of mailing with you know the the misspelled word on it he took the time to fill out another receipt of mailing for a certified document to spell his name correctly and then he mailed that back to me to make sure that I knew what his name was I could care less I could care less these things are psychopaths I could care less what their name is they care what their name is and and that's been the most profound you know when when I wanted um, Chaplo to, to pummel me you know here comes Bo and, and he tempted him he said you don't have any authority over that piece of property which referring to me because I'm not a piece of property to Bo by the way but he told the judge you don't have any authority and that guy came in and pummeled me to show me and prove to me that he had a penis and that's their game that's their game they have to prove their title judge yeah judge I can do whatever I want to well in that you know when you piss them off and you say no you're just a, an ant you're just a bug to me or you misspell their name because you don't care I don't care what their names are that pisses them off to the extent that they don't care what they're going to get as a re, uh, repercussion they just have to jump in there to defend the title or defend the title the way that that judge did and he evidenced himself to be preying on me because he was defending his title as a good judge, you know, or a manly judge, or an immortal judge. I mean, it, the whole thing is just hilarious. Well, he wrote, he rewrote, changed the whole document. Yes. What was the, uh, you put in a... Uh, I came upon a motion for an injunction. Yes. And he changed that to, that I was applying to him, right. appealing to him for uh, uh, okay. a... Okay. Uh, Pausing it uh, on the writ of ass assistance. Temporary restraining. Right. I gotta go read the file myself again. Right. It's been a while. It's on. That's yeah, I never what he did. He showed, you know, Bo. Bo said, "You don't have any authority over her." But the thing you have to take away from this is this is where he evidenced himself an attorney, not a judge. Absolutely, because he represented my word. He represented me when he changed what I was coming upon a motion for. And at that point in time, he became my attorney, and I'm like, I didn't ask for an attorney. You're not my attorney. I came upon a motion for injunction. This is the law, and that that's what's going to happen. But he didn't want to listen. He had this big uh, penis envy going on, and that's what the effeminate male displays constantly. It's absolute penis envy. And the psychopathic female does the same thing. She's got penis envy. And so to, to displace them go after their title I don't care what it is I don't care what their name is and that's something that really irritated the piss out of them because they want to be known as immortal they want you to pledge allegiance to them they want you to be on their knees when you don't give a crap about them I don't care they're beneath us they build their structures to make you look up to them by the way if you walk into a courtroom they've got this big huge bench and this little lady bitty judge behind it in a big black robe they want you to look up to them. That's a psychological warfare tactic. Stop doing that. Look down on them. They are beneath you. They are only criminals. Confederacy is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as a criminal enterprise. You're not to be looking up to them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and take a short break right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and call Ravana back so that he can come on in. And uh, you're listening to what we don't know uh, on these changing times radio .com. That is times with a Z or a Z, depending where in the world you come from. And we are listening to Tammy Pepperman and Bo uh, from uh, uh, Freedom Slips and uh, is it Revol Revolution Revol Revelation? I'm sorry, uh, radio. Which one is it, guys? Help me out. You are listening to These Changing Times Radio at thesechangingtimesradio.mean.com. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is the illusion of knowledge. If you would like to donate to these changing times, please go to www. 
dot these changing times t i m e z radio dot ning dot com. Thank you. Oh, and welcome back, everybody, to uh, what we don't know show on these changing times radio dot ning dot com. And that is times with a z or a z, depending where in the world you may be. And tonight we are joined by Tammy Pepperman and Bo um, of the Bo and Rocco show. And uh, we are also joined by Gravcat and by my cuz, Denny, and by Ravana 9000. And we are talking about the court case, uh, the, the case that was won on human trafficking uh, by Tammy Pepperman and Bo uh, doing some really uh, long and arduous uh, work to get there. And uh, it's done. It's a done deal. They've won. And uh, that's what we're discussing here tonight. And uh, while we were on the break, uh, Denny and and Tammy and Bo have been discussing uh, uh, the different aspects of the case and what they mean. Uh, what does the definitions of of uh, the rulings mean? What does it do for? Uh, what do they have to do? What what comes next? All these questions. So uh, I'm just going to let it. Uh, I wish I could have recorded what Tammy was saying while we were at break because uh, uh, it was it was very uh, informative also. But right now I'm going to turn it over to Bo and I'm going to let Bo uh, give his correct uh, radio station uh, call out and, and his show and everything. And then Bo, you can take it from there. Go ahead. Okay, well... Yeah, I got involved with this guy, Hawk, Nighthawk, he goes by, on the uh, YouTube channel. He contacted me going back a couple years. And, you know, Rocco and I had been conversing over Skype for, you know, a year or two, you know, almost years, because we're going through almost identical stuff. It's almost the same situation. And, and we just thought we could help each other out, and we just kept talking and learning from people. And, you know, we ran the whole statutory circus with code pleading and learning about all these constitutional theories and United States Code, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. Well, so when. Uh, Hawk talked talk to me over on YouTube and gave me a message there and said, well, why don't you come on you know, our station? We have this thing set up. They're mostly just doing round tables. But so I would show up and eventually he said, okay, well, how'd you like to do your own show? Because we're going to start having hosts now. And it just grew from there. We pretty much, I, I said, well, I got to have Rocco. We had a third guy at the time, but uh, we started that show, and we were still basically poking around in statues, right? And so our third guy was a, a code pleader who chose to stay on that route. You know, I refer to him as uh, his endearment is Satan. But, the, you know, the point of the matter is, is there's, there's a line you have to choose somewhere when you start realizing what's going on because the law merchant sold us everything that's under statute and that's the snake in the garden that's where it goes back to you've got the devil himself offering us shiny things and to you know we'll come over to where the pastures are greener and you know forget Adam you know you don't need him and, you know, there was, like, in codification, they put it down because, uh, you know, the, their world is in sync with the Bible, just like they, you know, use the Bible as an indoctrination technique for religious doctrines and and everything else. But they, you know, they... When you go back to the coronation charter, you see basically the same structure that was in the garden and the law merchant and the daddy state and all that. So they created a daddy state. But, uh, yeah, getting 
Oh yeah, getting back to the radio show. Yeah, we, and we've been over here a lot. You know, Tammy's been DJing. She got some DJ toys, and she's just having a blast, having a hobby, doing something besides wrapping her mind to all this stuff. You know, because her her years of of doing it, uh, you know, could drive anybody to that point to take up a hobby. You know. Yeah, I agree. And. <laughs> so so that's a good thing. And I yeah, I would do that one a week show because quite frankly, you know, from then until now I've been so busy in the research and writing and trying to do the production when we do have a document done and finished and need to get it distributed. You know, there's a lot of work and thought that goes behind every word that ends up coming out on that piece of paper. And we want to make sure that this is done absolutely correct from start to finish because this is our one chance here to actually have the leverage. We need to stop the depopulation program. They're killing us, folks. And this is our earth. This goes back to what Debbie teaches about the origins of the word Jesus. GE from Greek meaning earth and Zeus or the you know, second part of Jesus is you know of yours or of ours and once we realize that we are the heirs of this planet and it's our earth there's going to be no need for anybody to want to go to any of these attorneys that will sell us the right to be a Beneficium, and take the benefit privilege of being a citizen. Now, back in Rome, it was a fine line between being a citizen and being a slave. And in fact, if you got out, out of line just a little bit, and the market conditions were right, because this stuff is driven like all commerce by market conditions, you could find yourself being a slave real quick. So it's not too far from that reality now here in, you know, this landmass that we all live in and call the United States or the United States of America and define uh, boundaries and such. They also include Hawaii, Alaska, etc. But, uh, yeah, that's a good thing, by the way. I want to go on a side note here and let you know that under the public law there are there are no borders there are no boundaries no state lines and that sort of stuff that whole thing is unlawful on its face and it's created by the law merchant to again cash in all this crap that works against humanity is created by the law merchant for the law merchant to cash in on it 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 seems oh. like yeah it seems like that that what has been created is the exact opposite of of what it was. Um, there there was a yes, time. Yes. It... Go ahead. Well, it is the exact opposite, but it's a representation of life itself. That's what they recreated in their commercial world or aspect is life itself again and they keep recreating life itself the court is the actual union between a husband and a wife in the in the absolute a bank is the union of a husband and a wife in the absolute two parts which is life the, the word life comes from the word by bi it means two parts made animate and it takes both of us to do everything there's no limits when we get back together and that's why there's such a drive to separate the male and the female they call the male sexist they call the female you know all sorts of names and they they separate us out according to the spiritual and temporal by which to disallow us from functioning to our absolute ability and our absolute ability is only maintained when you put the two parts together 
and at that time you have the whole circle you can see the whole thing and you can uh, combat the whole thing you know otherwise we're just compartmentalized I'm a female so I'm, I'm practical I just do things with practice I, I go forward I don't have uh, hardly any impulse control uh, that's just me the female and so when I'm walking in practicality he's always walking in logic and weighing and measuring so if I'm going somewhere and I'm gonna fall down somewhere or, or get hurt doing what I'm doing he's gonna reach out and grab me and it's the same thing with me if there's something harmful around him I'm gonna go in and stop it because I'm always for in front of him as a practical uh, application because that's that's me I'm just practical that's what a female is Exactly. At least you can um, run out and buy a insurance. That's that's you got that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, Tammy, let's get back to the the document uh, uh, and the court, uh, the Congress, the case in Congress, um, and I want to go back to a couple of um, questions. Denny, uh, are you able to? Uh, ask your question or or uh, do you want me to read it out from the text? I'm not sure if you can come on air. Um, probably not a good idea for me to come on air, but um, I guess the question I thought um, was important was the one that we were talking about when we went on break, and that is um, if we have our case where we're trying to get you know, the corporate um, state to agree with us that we are correct in that, you know, uh, the land was stolen under fraud, then what well, no. cases would and, and we that's have? something, right, but let me take that one on first. And you wanted to know uh, how do we get them to agree with us. They are criminals. They have been found guilty of genocide. I don't contract with criminals, they don't get any special treatment or anything. And what I think what you're asking is how do you see the results of that? Now in the mainstream media right now, the means of production is to take the attorney, to take the banker, to take whatever, to discharge congressional bankruptcy and pay me back, the United States, which is all of us, they have to pay me back according to my fee schedule. And what you're seeing now in the mainstream media is them doing that. They're attacking each other. They're taking out CIA agents. They're taking out legislators. They're taking out attorneys, bankers, judges, social workers, administrators. That's all for the productive value of taking them out. And if you look at their criminal acts, I mean, it's just been hilarious what the productions that they come up with. Um, one attorney in Missouri, it was in the E-Missourian, this attorney was shot in both legs and he was charged with serial bank robbery. Well, back east they just did the same thing two weeks ago with a female attorney and said that she was robbing a gas station. Now, these attorneys are attorneys who are making between $150 and $300 an hour on average and they're out robbing banks and gas stations. Or is that a production by which they're producing just exactly like they would do to you? Because you would find yourself with CPS coming up, up against you, adult protection coming up against you, law enforcement saying, oh, you, you've been a bad boy, and you're trying to get out of it and say, no, 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 not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. Well, now they're in the chute. They're the things that's producing to discharge congressional bankruptcy. We declared them bankrupt again, and they owe us a whole bunch of money and we are the United States and that's what's being facilitated at this time the bonds are laid down everything's being facilitated however you just gotta wait because they had drawn out of the Treasury so long they drain that thing well now let's go back to the first incident though that we saw them following our direction back in March of this year we evidenced that they were, uh, well, we gave information to the IMF because the prosecuting attorney was not picking up the indictment for the uh, attorney and sheriff right. and judge. Right, and we had evidence at that time that the judge... Well, no, just the attorney and the uh, judge. Okay, so anyways, and, and they're getting funding, see, through the IMF 
to do these sort of things, to prosecute actual criminal, criminal activity, which we evidence. That's what an indictment is. You lay down information and show them the evidence. And we had that. And evidence that they were preying on me as a female. Well, the IMF, what that is, is the International Monetary Fund is pushing out money in the form of special drawing rights. So what happens is each municipality comes in and says, we're protecting females under feminism. Um, here's one that we got, and this one needs this amount of funding. Well, the minute I go into court as a female under feminism, that starts that transaction, and they start getting funding for protecting me. Throughout the whole case, I was evidencing that they were not protecting me. They were preying on me. And so by March, on March 8th, the IMF cut off their special drawing rights. They no longer get special drawing rights unless they can evidence that they're actually protecting people. They have to evidence, evidence, evidence now that they are actually protecting human beings. Well, they kept not doing that. And so by the time, what was it, October, when the government shut down and there was glitches with the stock market, that was after they were declared dead and put in the chute. So now they're in the holding corporation. They have to produce. They are the new product. They chose to be that product. Well, let's go back to uh, brass tax, though, in March. We put down the evidence that the United States, what we said was, on the 5th, we said, okay, the United States is voluntarily withdrawn from the IMF. The last board meeting minutes were posted on March 8th, and there was no activity for quite a few months there. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at the records, but uh, the two board members of the United States, Tim Geithner and Ben Bernanke, were their names were supposed to be, it just had big capital letters saying vacant. That's the most beautiful thing if you want evidence and proof. So then, you know, they did some shuffling around there and they had that one guy on the board for a while, but the United States called for two seats, so they still right. really didn't have a voice. Right, and they still don't have two seats back right now. They're just auditing officials in there. And in June is when, no, it was August, is when the IMF came in and said we're in a, um, oh gosh, I forgot the word, come on, um, where they pull back the funds. They have to put them back. And, and that was the most beautiful thing is to see that the IMF came in and said, yeah, the United States is not doing anything. You better start hurrying up and putting that back. And that's when all of a sudden all hell broke loose. And here's an attorney that's shot in both legs, charged with serial bank robbery. Here's a judge that's been charged with mailing narcotics through the mail as a drug dealer. Um, here's a few judges here that are charged with DUIs. And here's one charged with assault on his wife. And I mean, it just keeps getting better but and that, better and better. Th this recent stage, though, did not occur. Uh, well,. It picked up steam anyways, I must say, after we put the letter to Northern Holding, the agreed entry, after the agreed entry was put down in the United States District Court, right, right. and it was not argued, you know, right. we sent the official letter to Northern, right. that it, was not argued. No, and that's what that is, it's an agreed entry, and so you offer it to the other counterpart of the contract, of course. And if they agree, it just goes into force. And then after that, of course, we put it into force and everything else. In Northern Holdings, at that time, we said, you, you guys have immunity if you stop human trafficking immediately. Immediately, you have to stop human trafficking. Otherwise, you are not going to be immune. And they took the higher route, and they said, okay, we're, we're stopping human trafficking. And that is at that time when they started taking in the administrators, the attorneys, the bankers, the judges, uh, and all of these folks. And by the time we got to October, of course, we had evidence of human trafficking. Um, November is when they, uh, October 28th, sorry, is when they, we evidenced that they were killing Bo's mom because throughout that span of time, they had come in sideways attempting to stop him by killing his mom. Well, they diagnosed her with cancer. 
and they said immediately they wanted her to hurry up and go get uh, chemotherapy. When we got those medical records, she was never diagnosed with anything. She never had cancer. This doctor came in, told her she had cancer, convinced her to go for chemotherapy. Then eventually the chemotherapy caused lesions in her brain. Then he convinced her that she had a brain tumor and eventually she died. She was murdered by this doctor based on the directives of corporate counsel. When I put that to them, they did not deny that allegation at all, of course. And all this time we had the evidence of it. We had one pathology report uh, amongst her medical records that maintained that she did not have cancer. And this is prior to when they said that they were treating her with the brain tumor. In the end, when she was in hospice, um, in the chart notes on the medication that they were giving her, Ativan and, and uh, morphine, on the chart notes, it said they were still treating her for ovarian cancer, which is well after that pathology report that said she didn't have ovarian cancer. And at no time during this last uh, uh, time when they were killing her, did they indicate at any time that she had a brain cancer on the medical records. I mean, it was all this circle jerk. They were trying to get Bo to shut up. They were trying to shut him up. And it was the most horrifying experience to have to witness such things and all they had to do was buy her she bought into the medical industry she went to their you know advertisements their, their beautiful uh, hospitals and everything else and she paid with her life and that was the hardest thing ever you know to witness this again because my husband did the same thing back in 2000 uh, when I first went up against the Catholic Diocese they killed him within a year Sorry yeah, about that. I was trying to, I was I was trying to find my mic. Um, Say that again. I didn't hear you, Patty. Oh, I was just gonna say that. Um, uh, I had my mic double double muted, but um, I think I have a question. I think this might be what uh, Denise is, is trying to ask. I'm not sure. Um. She's saying that that we can that we cannot set up our own court until we get a no decision from uh, the the current system of government. No, because the current system actually was established as a criminal enterprise, and that's something that everybody needs to wrap their minds around. Our law enforcement are enforcing our law. They're foreclosing on the United States Incorporated as we speak. That's what you see in the mainstream media. They're shutting them down. If you look in any county in the United States Incorporated, you're finding that they're asking for public and private donations to keep their schools running, to keep CPS running. That is because they lost their funding based on their criminal behavior. They don't get a say in whether or not I'm a court. They don't get a say in whether or not I'm anything because they have absolutely no authority. They have been outed, evidenced, and adjudicated as a criminal enterprise. Right, and, and this is, I think, why I posed the question earlier in the chat for, for Cuz to look at. I, I think the question would be, um, we are going through the system now because that we are, uh, we were taken off our land, our family, was done great injustices right. and all of this. Uh, right. We and have there. If, if we were to to win in the system by proving the fraud, which we can do, um, then we would at least get the land back to where we would have our home again, our land again. If we Absolutely. go through, right? What do we get through? Do we get the land back through the United States court? Uh, Absolutely. You get everything back because they never had a right to it in the first place. They took it by trick and deception. That's what's in the Sister K. By Act. You get all the means and interest. But you're not realizing what the land actually is. It's not only you and it's not only the land here that you may have lost in the recent times. But we were all kidnapped through the British East Indian Trading Corporation through the Dutch lines, through the Spanish lines, through the Portuguese lines, through the French lines. And what they were doing was human trafficking way back when. 
and each time they got better and better and better at it and this is the most proficient use of that system is what you're witnessing now the use of the attorney the use of the psychiatry against us that's the most proficient use because you know in times past when they were trafficking us around in the shipping lines we knew that they were human trafficking but we were always feeling like we were slaves well in order to get us to participate in a greater extent they told us that we were not their slaves although they had us in shadow when they first took our estates the, uh, we had some titles and that's what happened they gave everybody titles and including Indian now when you go to the absolute core of American Indians when you go to the Iroquois Indian they have French dialect in their language that means that they were kidnapped at one time by the French maintaining yes. a holding corporation for a time and then after that they were deposited in Louisiana they were deposited in Canada but your original lands are actually overseas exactly like mine every bit of land on this globe is yours it does not belong to a psychopath you came from other places we were all the same family we were all the same color until they started kidnapping us and moving us to the north and south southern hemispheres at that point in time we always become white or black or variants in between only based on the vitamin D exposure our exposure to the Sun that's the only thing that changes our skin color we are not biologically different in any way except for we are not a psychopath they are biologically uh, inferior to the human being they don't have a frontal lobe but humanity has been trafficked all around everywhere throughout history the last 900 years has been nothing but human trafficking and when you go so, back to the origins you know you so under the United States court if we wanted to uh, come to you with our matter of, of uh, injustice done you're saying what you're saying is we don't have to there's no reason why we should have to bite fight the battle of, of uh, the patent and the fraud and the injustice is done no, to my it, we, no, because what, we well let me finish that. yeah right because that is what we uh, the original uh, uh, was about the same thing about taking us uh, well, the original crime the original uh, fraud happened when they took uh, our ancestors so well, anything beyond that give us evidence give us evidence of what what, what kind of evidence do we need Tammy well any evidence I mean okay for I know this is hard to wrap the mind around but every time that you've had a court case in court that's espionage against you. They're collecting and maintaining your information for the betterment of national security and the detriment of state security. Okay, so any court case that you have, any time that you have um, a mortgage document that you were tricked into signing, that is a dead pledge. You were indicating at that time that you were dead, overcoming the presumption of death uh, uh, under 38 U.S.C. 108. Now, when they trick and deceive you into those things, that's evidence of their crimes. And all you have to do is stand up in your local area. You know, we're just, uh, what this is, is you are already the United States. You are already one. We've all won as the United States. The thing is, is that going to each county is the difficult task now because I'm only one person, Bo's only one person. And so we need others to... Um, you know step up in the local area and especially do the ethne docs the forgiveness the executor and your ordinance of this state that maintains who's in your house that is your law those things are legislated by action of quorum meaning that those are your laws now a lot of people have come into play the CIA agents and, and everything else maintaining that they're sovereign citizens we are not sovereign citizens we're sovereign states we are not lawless our only law is do no harm against humanity do no harm the other laws that they perpetrate under are commerce nothing but commerce 
When you're charged with a drug offense, you're undercutting the federal government. If you go to 27 CFR 72.11, it says in their definition that those are crimes or offenses, violations against the laws of revenue. That means that the mafia is saying to you, you are undercutting me if you kidnap each other. I'm not making any money, so you're going to pay me some money now. Now that in itself is unlawful on its face. That is a criminal action. That is human trafficking. That is prostitution. Now that there is no denying that they're they're defunct. There's no denying that um, you know our law enforcement is enforcing our law. Now, our court has been uh, in action. We're just small. You know, we're just little, and, and it's hard for us to get everywhere all at the same time. Right. We have uh, a question from the chat. Uh, Otis would like to know, do all docs have to be filed at once, and in what order? Uh, they're never filed. Never, ever, ever file them with the clerk. You never, ever notarize them. They need to be, the order is forgiveness, and then the executor, the ordinance of the, uh, the, the, sorry, fee schedule, and the ordinance of the estates. Now, you can skip the fee schedule. We have your fee schedule on record, because we, when we came in as the United States, that was the fee schedule that we used, so you don't have to use another one. But the ordinance of the estates maintains whom is in your house, and it also directs law enforcement of your laws. You only adhere to the public law. You're not something that they need to pick up. You're not to be pirated, which is what that document said. If you want to take me anywhere, you're fully understanding and you're fully aware that this is piracy. Have at me, but you're going to pay me for this experience. Because that's all that law enforcement has been under the United States Incorporated since it began uh, under the um, 1947 uh, National Security Act. When these privateers are coming out, all they are there for is to pick you up and take you into admiralty courts for condemnation and sale. That means that they're going to put you on a what? A shakedown. So you got a speeding ticket. Oh, we found drugs in your car. We have to confiscate your house now. That's how they redistribute humanity. Now you're still subject to that system if you do break the public law, say you shoot somebody for no reason. Right. Yeah, you know, if you harm, you, you, you can be Yeah, the fee schedule is not going to protect you from that. Absolutely not ever. And the fee schedule actually doubles in your face because if you harm a human being and you remove its ability and re or especially if you remove it, uh, the life of a human being, your estate becomes theirs. Okay, I have it's two. Done under self I have two more questions. I have two more questions mm -hmm. for you. There's a little bit of lag tonight. Uh, I'm on satellite, so uh, sorry about that, guys. But uh, that's why you're hearing the the pauses and and a little bit of the uh, overrun of voices. We're sorry for that. But um, the first question is, where are the ordinance of a state? And the second question is so what do we do with the documents once we have them and Tammy I think it might be good to uh, let people know exactly where they can go and get these documents right right it's at chooseyourside.org uh, we also just opened up uh, TammyPepperman.org thanks to Zeets um, and you can find it in the document or resource section and when you go in there, uh, the entire case is in there. The entire case, start to finish, what we did, what happened, and all of the documents I have personally used. I will never, ever, ever use a human being as a guinea pig, ever. And I don't pick something that I do not know is the absolute. And you can read all about this. I was inside of it the whole time. That Those are what the docs are. My personal docs, Bo's personal docs. These are the experiences that we went through and we can guarantee those docs because here I am and that's what occurred and this is what has occurred based on that process which is actually what Jesus told us to do. 
And all I had to do was write it in their language so that the dead could hear us. Bring out your dead. Yeah. Next <laughs> <laughs> to the round people. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, now we have uh, the other question that I did want to get to. Um, each person in in if if there are people who are listening right now who understand uh, the necessity for for doing this if if you if you really want to uh, uh, make that break and and become uh, uh, you uh, instead of a, a uh, uh, asset for the government to use at their will uh, in every state like here where I'm at. Uh, I take this uh, the document the the forgiveness uh, document and I fill it out it's it's all there on your website I fill it out I put my name in there and and uh, all my information I take it up to the recorder uh, and then right. the re right uh, and then and once those are your one date. right and once those I've recorded Go ahead. Those documents, what they are, are land deeds. Those are property deeds. And what you're doing is you're obliterating the franchise created by unlawful acts in the forgiveness doc. And you're coming back in in the executor doc and you're claiming that property. My process, it's not for you to patronize us or anybody else. As the United States of Being, we're all here as human. I love you. I'm here for you. You're here for me. That's what humanity is. But you do not patronize any other house. You're not going to patronize any other father except for your own house. And that is what Jesus kept trying to tell you. He kept saying, don't patronize another father. Don't call anything else your father. Only you. There's only one father on this planet. That is you. And if you look at the dynamics of you being a father, I have gone all of my life, in all of my walk, in all of my journey, and I have learned from everybody I have ever come in contact with, good or bad, I have learned. That is what a father does. It creates a child. I am the proverbial child, and I'm learning as I walk along through this life from you, my father. And as long as you speak the word of God, I'm safe. And that's what Jesus was maintaining in 1 Corinthians 13. As long as you trust in each other, and you have faith, hope, and charity, everything will fall into place. And it has. I that's just true. simply follow those rules. I have All I another... have to do is follow those rules. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Uh, where in the county recorder do we record on the record? I was directed to probate in a sealed file by Wayne County Register of Deeds and refused recording. Right, and you need to go after them. You need to take it to the Register of Deeds. You uh, maintain record on demand. You can put it in the miscellaneous section or whatever you need to do, uh, but it needs to be at the Register of Deeds or Recorder's Office. It is your deed. That is your law. That I is your mine work. Twice. I had to do mine twice before I got it right because they screwed me at the um, recorder's office, even though they, you know, even though, I, even though I got through the fight of not having a notary. See, they're going to, they want to, micromanage how you put your public deeds on record so right. this is your first test against the federal state when you go to record these things right and, and that's something that everybody needs to be aware of this is always a test and so they do apply forces we have evidence the forces that they use upon everybody and so there's a lessening of this but they will attempt to persuade you to go to the other daddy that is your test that's always been the test. That was the test in the Garden of Eden. How much pressure can you succumb to before you end up falling back on the other demigod there? That has always been the test. That is the separation of the spiritual and the temporal. That is all of this game. Now, if you, you know, so often in, in religious indoctrination, everybody's taught to be secular and privatized 
and everything else. So, um, you know, most often when I hear from somebody and they're crying for help, it's at the end of a very long run of being tortured and traumatized. Now, instead of being secular and private, share that with others. Share that with others. Because once we lighten that burden, we can hold them accountable for these things. They have taught us shame and degradation to the extent that nobody wants to talk about the things that I talk about. And that's where the impasse was. Everybody's hiding in their houses and they feel so ashamed to be because they've been raped by a priest, because they've been raped by a teacher, because they've been sexually molested, because they've been psychologically uh, destroyed, because they've been so abused by somebody they trusted. Because they had a foreclosure, because they had a credit card default. Right, and stop doing that. Stop playing into all of that because once they indoctrinate into you that you're a bad boy or bad girl, you strive to be good for them and to prove that you're not a bad boy and a bad girl. And that's how the game is played. They need you to accept those titles as debt or, or as, uh, you know, whatever else they want to call you. And, and how, stop accepting those and realize. How do, how do I evidence the refusal to record? Uh, get it on uh, either audio or video recording. Uh, most of the time, we all walk around with audio recorders. Yeah, we got these cool um, little things now that you can put a recorder in a keychain, a uh, video even. So we yeah, like those now. You can get them. You can pick them up for like twenty bucks. So. Yeah, they're really neat. They look like a. Put it uh, on YouTube. Yeah, we should. Um, the uh, video recorders that we got, we found them recently, uh, a couple months ago anyway. They're like 20 bucks a piece, but they look like the little clicker for the uh, car thing to turn off and on the alarm. And um, they're easy to carry and everything, and they have an hour at least, at the smallest amount of 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes um, of recording time. But that's enough for you to interact, you know, otherwise... Uh, I know that I carry a Sony recorder with me uh, everywhere I go because, you know, r weird stuff always happens. But, um, yeah, carry a recorder with you. And remember that you can go in there armed with their law and use their law against them as well. Uh, it is a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1501 to deny recording, um, obliterating, altering your docs, whatever else. Uh, 1506, if you get a process server to serve that, they are already guilty if they deny your process server um, of assault on a process server under 18 U.S.C. 1506. So, you know, we're, we're not playing games. Yeah, we got that one. We got a 1506 in our case. We did. Uh, twice, because the FBI uh, was involved. Well, this is last year during the uh, lead-up. Um, the uh, FBI got involved between the Marshal Service and actually interfered with law enforcement because they were trying to maintain secrecy and they didn't want to be outed at, because that's their function. Uh, federal Bureau of Investigation's function is to protect the federal government. It has nothing to do with law enforcement whatsoever. Um, uh, he's... Uh, he wants to know where he can get the recorder. I imagine you could probably get it at any uh, electronics store, probably even Walmart for that matter, huh? Something that would, would work as well. I was thinking maybe uh, a I cell phone even. Right, we maybe. Had a, I had a friend just, you know, that's in commerce go and give me like um, five on, uh, oh, what's the big uh, it's Amazon. Amazon or something, yeah. But I'm, you might be able to get them at your local store, but it's cheaper probably on Amazon because they they do buy in bulk. Yeah, you know, I I've hate dealing with commerce. Some of it out of the you know law of necessity. So I've got a little uh, recorder, voice recorder that uh, I can put it on and it will record cord as soon as it hears a voice. And I could just slip it in a pocket or something, you know. Uh, I think I paid maybe uh, 12 bucks for it. You know, it works really good. But Oh, cool. 
Right, it always carries it because they're sneaky little shits, you know. They do anything, everything they know is underhanded. And um, so you want to record it and evidence your interactions with them. Uh, try to limit your interaction. Before you go into any meetings or anything else, what I start out teaching is the Delphi technique. And everybody needs to read the book. It's a huge book, but it, it talks about the Delphi technique and how you're suckered, how consensus reality is created, uh, what the action of a change agent is, what the action of ratifying agents are. And once you're able to identify them, then you walk through life and instead of being scared, you look at them and, and you laugh because it's so funny. They always have the same demeanor. They always have the same characteristics. They're always the same agents. And once you know how to identify them, that's the neatest thing, by the way, because that, that is the mark of the beast. Once you know their number, once you know what they are by their works and actions, then you can go forward because it, it's comical as to their behavior as useful idiots. They, If you throw them off and you're not predictable and you're not claiming these titles and you're not defending yourself against, you know, these little petty things, you know, and the ego against things, then they don't know what to do. They go into chaos. They're, all they are is mechanized. By their, through their indoctrination, through their educational experience. And so in their mechanized state, if you throw something in there that, that they're not expecting, like not being what they think you are or what they need you to be, all of a sudden they just, they're thrown off all the way. They're, they're absolutely compartmentalized um, and, and they don't know how to deal with you. So you want to record your interactions. And as you record them, as you go along, you'll see, you'll have recorded evidence that it is getting better. You know, at first, you know, you're timid and they, they are scary. They can scare you. And then all of a sudden when you get over these humps and you realize their pattern of behavior, then they're not scary. Then they're funny. Then they're just plain stupid. Then they're, I mean, it, it's like this gravitational experience. And by the time you get to the other end of that, you're you're smiling because it's it's something that's, that's such um, a lighter load than what you were dealing with initially. You know, but... Uh, the Delphi book will enable everybody to be able to recognize it before you enter into them and, and uh, so you can see them in their um, their uh, plainest light, you know, you can see them right away if you learn about them first. I, I did a little YouTube video on it a couple months back if you can find it. Um, that was a good start and there's links in the bottom. Right, and that was, I think, um, the Delphi technique, psychological warfare, or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is, and and anybody can find that at Bono's Entertainment, and at my page as well, because I would have liked it. Um, uh, Tammy K32. That's got to be buried though, pretty deep. Right. Well, I don't have, well, I have many videos. I have an, uh, another addendum to the questions that we've been putting out. Um, I tried to record the fee schedule in Macomb County and they threatened me with a state and federal investigation three months ago uh, haven't heard anything since they refused filing and wrote their threat on paper right okay. give me that threat send that to us go ahead and they can do that yeah, at your well, we website need evidence. We needed evidence, um, and just go to a different county for now. You go to a county that will re realize uh, that common sense tells you that you got four signatures on the thing, then that's better than a notary. Uh, well, way better if you realize that the notary is counter deeding your stuff and turning you over, delivering you up to the other daddy, as Tammy likes to say. And, um, you know, then. We'll go ahead and charge them under 18 U.S.C. 1506 if we got the evidence. We could put the charge in, and we need to charge. We need to. That's well, that's the charges for our bank. So right. we're gonna, you know, start depositing those charges and helping humanity with uh, these appropriations. Um, and you know, we gotta start evidencing more and more how they work. See, they're hiding behind policy. They've got policy. That they said, well, this is what we do, you know, and that is what they do because corporate counsel attorneys 
right after policy, and it's got nothing to do with any laws or anything. It's just what they want them to do, and they're coerced into doing so they can keep their nice little government job, you know, and the paycheck coming in. It's it's another form of coercion they use on their own. Uh, but if you make them, you know, aware of like 18 U.S.C. 1501 and 1506, and then your state codes will have a local, uh, will have a state code for the same thing that, you know, and it says basically they're just supposed to record what you give them. Right. That's and, your deed. And that's when they, at that point, now if you've gone beyond that point and you already are maintained as the United States and you have your ordinance of the states down, then they're, they're not charged under their statutes, they're actually charged under our fee schedule. And if they alter your heading, that's the $33 billion fee. Any time that they stop you from doing what you, the human, does, and they're altering your heading, they're voluntarily assuming those charges under 46 U.S.C. Chapter 311 and 313. This is all in commerce and navigation, and so when they assume those charges, they're voluntarily assuming those charges. They know that rule. They know the game of risk. They're playing a card game at all times. They're playing chess, a board game. So you have this chessboard, you have the card game, however you want to envision it, but the game of risk is the game of risk. And to maintain risk, you have to have the other disparity, which is you. Now that game of risk is in the Commerce Clause of the Constitution, maintaining that they can do whatever they want to, unless they get caught. The, the getting caught part is the insurance risk. And that is what's in 46 U.S.C. Chapter 311 and 313, maintaining if they get caught, they're voluntarily assuming the charges that they have against you. All of this crap, all of this medical industry, the psychological industry, the criminal industry, they are volunteering to take that in your state. And that's what we held them to in this case. That now, is a contract. When you look at the fee schedule, you'll see not 33 billion though, you'll see 547T, that's metric tons, 096 ounce, I believe it is, troy ounce of uh, gold, because that, that was the way to do it in lawful money at the value of gold at the time, which was valued at like 1710 or 1800, I think about 1710 about the time we did the fee schedule. And you know this that's when, you know, you haven't seen those prices on gold in quite a while. It's back down to thirteen or something like that. Well right. that's no accident. That's because of the fee schedule. Right. The fee schedule, they have to pay you that lawful money at par value. And they had to find par value at one dollar for one ounce of gold. They're not paying us back at market value, which is twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars an ounce. They have to pay us back at par value exactly as they defined a, a lawful dollar, a lawful money. Right, because a dollar is only a measurement of that substance called money. Right. It's like I have inches a, or feet. I have uh, a couple more. Um, I have the evidence that was that was why I changed from Wayne County filing, so he knew about changing the venue. Um, he said, uh, how do I get it to you on the web? How does he send you the information uh, if he goes to your website? Do you have a uh, contact there that he can uh, well, get the, in touch with you? The quick, right. The quickest way is just to Skype it. Add us to Skype. At least one of us. Uh, T. Pepperman and, and, you know, Bowie's Bonos Entertainment and that. But um, add me to Skype. And then, you know, you can send me your evidence as long as it's, you know, a scan. I, I, and try to get an email right. address link or something up on the sites, too, soon. Right. And then after that, you know, of course, you can mail it later. Um, we've had, this last year, they've been throwing agents at us left and right. And um, when we got the agreed entry, when we had the United States Incorporated understand us and everything else... That is the top level of government. Now, there's still these FBI agents on the ground that are irritating as hell. They're like cockroaches. But, you know, we can't give out the 
address over the air, but after I get to know you, I will give you the address by which to send the evidence, you know, in hard copy, but only if I know for sure that you're not an FBI agent, because that, those entities are the ones that are and have been attacking us. That's the one that took my daughter last year uh, through a pedophile ring by which she shot me up and has been threatening me for a year. The FBI is no longer, I mean, it's not controlled by um, the CIA. It's controlled by these uh, senators and, and House of Representatives, the federal state. That is their law enforcement. So when they're not happy about being held accountable, that's what they do. I mean, if you go back into the church committee reports on what they did against Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King, the FBI was just absolutely horrifying to him. And eventually they had to kill him. They had no other option because they couldn't vilify him. They couldn't take him out. They couldn't call him a pedophile. They couldn't call him this or that. And eventually that's why they assassinated him. It had nothing to do with a citizen or anything, any other. That was the FBI. Well, guys, uh, it's been an actual um, three-hour show. Uh, we've got about 12 minutes to go. Um, I think if we're going to go anywhere, I think our next, uh, what we should leave the listeners with is uh, a, a kind of positive uh, affirmation of what, what you're doing and where it's going to lead them. Um, uh, so that so that they can leave leave the show with a picture in their mind of what what they're going to be doing and what it's going to give them what they are going to actually uh, how they're going to actually help themselves doing this well absolute freedom um, when you enter into your own house the the original houses if you go back to like the gun housing charter or whatever these houses had come in and said, hey, you want me to represent you? But after they implicated those forces, okay, it's always been after a war that they come in with hearts and minds and say, hey, look, I can protect you. And they're the ones that are slaughtering you. So these houses were established. They're all productivities or um, productions. Okay, it's always been the same CIA. It's always been the same CIG. It just had different names throughout the history of time. Now, when you're patronizing that, you're accepting all the rights and all the benefits that come along with that. Some of them only you like. You like the welfare, you like the social security, you like the veterans benefits, but you don't like the benefit of being killed in the hospital setting, and you don't like the benefit of being institutionalized in the mental institutions, and you surely don't like the criminal aspect, being criminalized by your government as a right and a benefit of being a citizen under that system. Under patriotism, the, that, those benefits of being raised and slaughtered and, and used in all manner of ways, that's what you're doing by uh, discharging congressional bankruptcy. All of those things are means and mechanisms of using your body to generate revenue by which to discharge congressional bankruptcy. And if the, it's so profound for me because that, that's the delineation for me. It's you're either going to choose you, your house, or you're going to choose the other house to be a resident or a citizen of. And if you choose your house, you don't have those benefits. You don't have the benefit of being killed. You don't have the benefit of being institutionalized. You don't have the benefit of being picked up as a prisoner of war under 1929 Geneva Convention. And on top of that, you get the means and interest from your estate that they stole way, way, way back when. Okay, the, the Coronation Charter was in 1100. The Gownhausen Charter was in 1180. The Dialogue on the Exchequer was in 1180. We're not talking about yesterday or, or two months ago or if you've ever been damaged, you can collect damages. I'm not a pimp. There's nobody in the middle anymore. And so what we did was we came in as the United States, not on behalf of, we came in as the United States and we said, look, you are preying on me. Here's the evidence. You're guilty of this. Now you owe us the fee schedule. Now, as that fee schedule pays out, you get those amounts. I don't get paid. I don't take a cut. 
Nobody takes a cut because you're patronizing your own house. All we are is the court. And now we have the law enforcement. But that's the way it was supposed to be originally. Originally, the court was just there to adjudicate. That means that they view evidence and rule accordingly. You have evidence that you're being human trafficked. The judge says, yep, you're being human trafficked, okay? Charges that other guy. You get the benefits of that. You get the money from that. There is no more middleman, and that's what Jesus was trying to say. They've shut up the kingdom of heaven, and here they're offering you rent on your body, which is called damages and injury, and they're paying you $10,000, $20,000 for you to lose a leg or an arm or an eye. That allows you to rent your body. So they're paying you for those pieces of your body. That's sick. That is just sick. You know, when you when you have your child sexually abused, okay, and, and your child's been sexually abused, that bank is going to come in and charge the sexual abuser for rent on that child's body. That judge catches in on the rent on your child's body. He just rented you to a criminal. He just rented your baby to a criminal. Now, that doesn't happen over here at United States Court. That doesn't happen under public law. Because that's unlawful on its face. That's human trafficking. That is the action of genocide. Everything that happens to you, as long as you're of the United States, as the United States, you get the benefits of that. You get paid for that. You get your stuff back. Nobody's in the middle taking anything. And you don't have to fear. There's no, you don't have to fear anymore. Uh, the knock on the door, you know, you don't have to fear uh, going to the mail every day. You don't have to fear when you're driving your car. Uh, right. You and know. I, and I have that up on my YouTube channel as well, Tammy, or uh, yeah, Tammy K32. If you go to my YouTube channel at Tammy K32, go down to the video that says Adventures with Tammy. And that's when Ryan and Adam got stopped by law enforcement. And I want everybody to hear that because it's the most beautiful thing. They got stopped. They had the ordinance of the estates with them. They had to deal with corporate counsel for about 45 minutes, but they were let go. Ryan actually had a warrant for his arrest in another realm, you know, under their set, uh, statutes at that time. At that time, anyway. We went after him for espionage because they did that in the first place uh, at a later date. But... In their statute, under their laws, under their statutes, they should have had the ability to pick up Ryan and Adam and the driver, which was a citizen with a um, suspended license that was driving them around. That did not happen. They did not want the liability of the fee schedule. And that whole entire conversation is on my YouTube, and you can hear the interaction with law enforcement, and you can hear them let, being let go. You know, law enforcement still at the end of that call. We're still willing to take the truck, even though we had uh, told them about their liability. But then by the time the morning had come, though, we had contacted the tow company, given them the fee schedule, and they let the truck go without any identification whatsoever because they knew that they had the liability if they kept it any longer. But the human beings were let go that evening within 45 minutes. Yeah, and I it, was walking and got accosted, so you don't have to be driving, but they, they did go after me a while back. They were just, uh, you know, we had a federal agent, and he called in two backup county police, and I was accosted for 45 minutes. All I had my, was my demand card with uh, the fee schedule and uh, other documents listed on it. And that guy was on and off the phone, you know, with the corporate counsel attorneys, I'm sure, and the sheriff, and, you know, for 45 minutes, and they finally let me go. Of course, they didn't have anything on me, but, they, you know, it just goes to show you, really, if, if I was just carrying around a driver's license at that point, they probably would have had me, because they wanted me. It doesn't matter. Right. They do what they do, because they're working for the Confederacy. Until they meet the speed schedule. We... When we established the fee schedule, the $33 billion, I know it sounds like a funny number, but that's the amount of money they're making on you 
at any given moment in time. That's the amount your estate is worth. And so I prefer four, 547T. That's metric tons of gold, baby. Yeah, I like that one. But um, that stops them from coming up against you because now it's not a benefit to take you. It's actually zeroing out, and they owe you that $33 billion if they if they would like to contract with you further. And at that time, they don't want to contract with you further. And that's what we... Uh, that was the most prominent in our minds. The most important was to get them to just stop harming humanity. And that becomes a stopping point is that fee schedule. They have to have absolutely no benefit in taking you. And that's what we did with the fee schedule and the ordinance of the estates. Yes, and, and, and it's always been that way because that is their modus operandi is money uh, and commerce. That's what that's what right. oils the gears, you know. So anything that is a detriment uh, is not worth it to them. Uh, since you guys have done this, since you won, we've got like a couple minutes, but hey, this is uh, TCT. We do what we want. But um, uh, since you guys have won this, uh, has there been a cessation of 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 the attacks and and the harassment? Um, absolutely. I, know, I, I absolutely. must. Absolutely, it was like a. It was like between night and day, you know, and um, uh, like when when they had uh, stopped him when he was walking one day, immediately, you know, we responded with espionage. Okay, so okay, here you want my information, you want identification. Why do you want that? That's to the betterment of national security against state security. And now you actually have the liability of these things. They don't like the liability. And, and these cops, like I said, these cops don't know. The one agent that was there was FBI. They know. They're the ones that are directing the cops along with corporate uh, counsel. But the cops are innocent. They're just low IQ human beings out there thinking that they're protecting humanity when in reality they're protecting corporations, but they don't know that. They right. think they're doing a good thing when they arrest you for doing pot or, or doing something that against the laws of revenue, which is just absolutely bullshit. And that's that's part of what we do. We're teaching the agents. We're teaching the cops. We're teaching everybody who's culpable, who's accountable in all of this, because there's a lot of useful idiots. And that is a legitimate term, by the way. Um, it means they've been used, you know, useful, idiot, useful, innocent. They're just innocent. They're just doing their function according to all the things that they know, which is a very limited amount, and at that time they're a useful idiot, in that they are not to be held accountable. If somebody's innocently doing something and they're not with intent to harm, they're not to be held accountable. Their handlers are. The FBI is. The CIA is. Corporate counsel is. You know, Congress is. You know, you don't, you, you don't want to go after the little guy when you get a ticket. You don't want to go after the cop. You want to go after Congress because Congress is the one that activated that law in the first place. Right, and and you know if you if you're going to step out, if you're going to leave the farm, uh, then you have to know that that uh, you're going to be tested. As as uh, Tammy said, uh, it doesn't stop what's going on out there, but I guarantee you that with the fee schedule. And then being culpable and having to uh, adhere to that uh, the second time they'll think twice and maybe the third time they'll think better you know um, well in the first time they think twice because we, and, and that's what we evidence with Ryan and Adam when they got stopped it was upon the fee schedule corporate counsel said nope let him go I mean that that's all it takes we, we don't argue with cops. We don't tell them they don't have any authority. We just ask for their supervisors. And, and the ordinance of the states was created so that you can send it ahead of wherever you're going to be. So if you're going to be traveling across the United States, send it to each and every county. Send it to each state before you go there because that's a contract. It says you guys are privateers. If you feel like you need to pick me up and be a privateer, that's okay. Here's my fee schedule. And we're going to deal with this if you ever stop me on the road. At that point in time, when you get stopped, if you get stopped, 
you ask to speak to their supervisor, hand the cop a copy of your ordinance of the estates. That has all of your information on it. The forgiveness doc location, executive doc location, and the location of your fee schedule. When, when that's handed over to the cop, the cop is low IQ, as you know, we spoke about it earlier in the program. He has to go to the attorneys, hand that to the attorneys. The attorneys know what that says, and they know what it means, and they'll, they, they direct the cops then to let you go. That is not a good mark, according to the attorneys. That increases their liability, and uh, as I said, we're not going after these cops. We're going after the handlers. Right, exactly. Uh, you can't blame the herd. You have to go after the the uh, uh, master. You know. Uh, yeah. But anyway, we we are just about we are out of time, and uh, you know we could probably go on for a couple of hours, but uh, uh, I really have to get some sleep. And I, uh, Ra Ravana has had to drop off, and so did Cuz. Um, I still have Cat with us, but um, before you guys go, Tammy one more time um, give out your your website and uh, Bo uh, you can give out yours and GraphCat do you have any questions before uh, or or any comments that you want to make before you go off to dream time oh. and sh she's fumbling well, for well it would help Mike yeah, it would help if I wasn't double muted, I suppose. Um, no, I'm quite, uh, there are some things that I've been made aware of a little bit here because, uh, you know, I guess when I was first listening to Tammy, um, I was quite taken back by so much that I, I was still naive to because I've been down so many other different rabbit holes, it's not even funny. And all my life, I've tried to stay away from the government end of life because I don't believe in it. And in my ideas, I think we have way too much government. And I just sit at a point like probably so many other people are sitting. What can we do to kind of put an end to this idiocy uh it's just getting to be a little bit on the madness side to me and right and uh, you, we have like to i keep said you you've yeah um i get that because like i said you've opened my eyes to a few things um i'm just understanding that there are some things that um even in my travels when i started um experiencing the wonderful thing of traveling to different countries i realized uh, my first thing that I, I in the getting um, visas uh, is ridiculous and you know I was so naive to that process and I will just say this real quick it was like you know by God given right I have the right to travel any I should have the right to travel anywhere on this planet being of good moralistic standard why can't I because there were so many different little stupid laws to say I couldn't go there for a certain period of time over a certain period of time and us from the United States needed a, a certain um, documentation from the FBI that we're not terrorists and I'm just like are you for real just to go right. and, and, and visit somewhere on my yeah right and, and which sometime I would like know, to talk to you about that though that'd be Right, and, and we overcame all of that right to travel crap because we don't travel. We, uh, we don't uh, act in commerce. We travel and convey property and cargo. And in reality, uh, as a vessel, if they happen upon me and they want to be privateers, it's a violation of 18 U.S.C. 81 under privateering. Now, my vessel is not to be registered or licensed. It's not their vessel. I'm not acting within commerce. I'm not asking them to kidnap me or anything. I'm, I'm contracting with them. If they feel like kidnapping me, that's great. They'll pay my fee schedule and then we'll have fun together because, you know, I play the game the same way they do. Except right. A, I think I'm a little bit more bitchy. I was going to say the lighter side of that would be <laughs> just think in your own town if you went, if you just went around your town and, and, and 
um, were stopped for a couple of things or whatever. I mean, you could rack up the bucks. I'm just, I'm just joking. Though. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. And I'm more than willing to be available for them to contract with me, but they have to pay my fee schedule. And it's not only $33 billion. That goes to the administration. Now, the cop that does not back off after he has my ordinance of the estates, they get it for a transgressor fee, which is their weight in gold. That's you excellent. Know, whatever they weigh, I don't care. You know? ten, in 10-minute ten intervals. Yeah, every 10 minutes. So if they don't back away within 10 minutes, they get the transgressor fee again. However, we do give the law enforcement leeway because we know that they are of limited IQ. However, if they are terrorists and they are psychopaths, uh, they're you know guilty at inception, of course, because they are the director. And that's how our fee schedule works. There's a lesser fee schedule for those that... Uh, continue with intent to impede our travels but they might be innocent of the reason we're being detained or whatever so uh, we do account for the weight and gravity of whatever is done against us as well and that that's what was maintained in the order since august as well everybody's going to be held accountable according to their works that is one of the most profound rules that jesus gave us and um as I said, if, if somebody's innocent, their works say they're innocent. And if somebody's guilty, they're guilty. But if they're egregiously guilty, uh, you know, we were, I was talking to Craig Kurt again this, this day earlier. And, and um, you know, he's my nemesis. He's Satan. And um, he admits to being Satan. And I keep warning him. I said, you know, it, it, there's a greater damnation for those that deliver people up than there is for somebody walking around in innocence preaching the Lord God's word or, or preaching these laws that, that harm people. You know, and, and he knows what he's doing, and he continues to do it. And that is my adversary, and, and that name is Satan. Yep. Well, um, on, on that note, uh, give us your uh, website, both of your websites, your new one also. Thank you, Zeets, for doing a yep. great job. And uh, then All we'll right, pass Nellie. it on over to Bo. Yeah. Okay. He's amazing. Um, both of us have, we maintain the two sites, the chooseyourside.org and uh, tammypepperman.org. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can find me at uh, Tammy Peppermint or Tamara K. I'm on YouTube, Tammy K32. And Bo's on YouTube, Bo Knows Entertainment. Um, he doesn't really act a lot in commerce. I put up with Facebook because I teach there. I don't really pay attention and I really like how the news feed is where I can just get rid of somebody if I don't want to see what they have to say so it, it makes it easier for me to access uh, news you know especially our news our alternative news and and what the human being is experiencing and, and um, it makes it nice for me to catch up every day on Facebook and of course Skype uh, T. Pepperman on Skype alright All and I yes. Just on Twitter. And I and <laughs> you know what? Um, you're not a member of TCT Radio, of the site. I'm gonna have to give <coughs> you that link, um, so you yeah, can join. Yeah. Well, right. And that that was because of Ning. That was years ago that Ning um, blocked my account at TammyK23 at Hotmail.com, and that's something that we'll take care of as we circle back to because that one, um, of course, when we were uh, doing it on uh, yourrights.ning uh, urrights.ning with Andrew Yanidis Ning shut us down and, and for some reason they blocked my Tammy K23 at Hotmail account and um, on the other night, Ning sites I can't sign in as that but I do have another address that I'm using to get on there so I'll do that um, after we get off the show Right, and you're also on No Borders, too. No Borders Radio at Scottish Sovereigns on the Land. You can catch her on air there. Um, and right. also, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, Bo, and give us... Uh, it's the Bo and Rocco show on freedomslips.com. Uh, is that correct? Yep, that's pretty much it. We do... Our Wednesday show from 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and um, 
and we'll um, continue to be there, I guess, on Studio A into the new year. I never got into that racket because it was my lifelong dream. It just seemed to be uh, something that fell in my lap and something to do. And what it's evolved into is basically, uh, uh, you know, something that's it's um, been, you know, beneficial, hopefully, to everybody listening, but to myself, just to keep keep me uh, safe here because I'm I'm you know going public with this stuff. Um, yeah, Rocco, uh, he's got a YouTube. He hasn't been on the uh, internet too much. Um, hopefully we'll again be in a better situation soon. I pretty much try to put all my pertinent stuff on the Bonos Entertainment YouTube channel. And let's see, Rocky's on, Rocco's on Facebook. He does check that because he can do it on his phone. And that is Rocco Vanzetti Temporary? Post location. Post location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rocco Vanzetti temporary post location for whatever reason uh, I'm not on Facebook but I will get messages from Rocco or Tammy on Facebook uh, I just uh, I can't do everything I just I never like the idea of Facebook being about you know starting out as a where they put mug shots you know that's where the name comes from you know and everybody goes in there and posts their own mug shots for God's sakes it's funny well, that's okay. If they want to negotiate me, they just have to pay my executive. Well, yeah, but like everything, yeah, we've turned it around and used, you know, something that was meant to be used against us, and we're using it to spread the, you know, information in real media, because we are the only real media. We know everything else is directed by the Broadcasting Board of Governors. So, keep watching the news, though. They are following our direction, and, um, you know, this uh, rash of people taking the heat, you know, like politicians and um, doctors, uh, teachers, cops, and attorneys and judges, of course, is, is all part of the order to start deprogramming people. So I'm going to try to cover more of that on YouTube. Uh, interesting thing is, is I don't get the viewership when I do those types of videos for whatever reason so uh, yeah that too hopefully will start shifting as people start you know realizing what kind of matrix that they've been living in their whole life right um, so yeah in here I appreciate you you know giving us some airtime on these changing times and you know I think it's great it's it's like my uh, weekend hobbies now to uh, listen to the, <laughs> the station here, and and we, have, you know, I think we've got a good little crew here. I have to agree, and I, that's what I was going to let everybody know. Uh, you can tune in any time and have a chance of catching Tammy or Bo, uh, and and uh, they have command of the airwaves. Uh, when the, when it, the stream is free and uh, we're really happy to have them aboard um, and what you need to do also is is you need to download the podcast and then you need to pass them around to put them on your YouTube channel you know um, send them out in an email because the information is extraordinary <coughs> the education and the knowledge is is priceless uh, it's everything that we want rolled up already done with a bow on it all you have to do is step up and claim it uh, it's all by consent either you consent to be a part of the system and a slave or you consent to be you a free being on the earth you know uh, this is our choices Was that a P P come on sister what? sister did you use a pun there with the bow what, on it. <laughs> was I being punny? <laughs> no, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> but anyway, thanks everybody for no. listening. And Tammy. Thank you, Patty. Be well. Yes, and you too, Tammy. And thank you so much, Tammy and Bo. You both, you just blow my mind uh, with, with the good work that you guys are doing. And we will promote you from now until forever. 
uh, love to you guys and love to the listeners out there thanks for joining us in the great questions and uh, we'll see you again uh, I don't know if Tammy will be on tomorrow night but you might check or during the day you never know um, but we will be on Sunday start broadcast at 12 noon and it up at 12 midnight so we'll see you there and thanks for listening to what we don't know on these changing times radio.ning.com and we'll see you on the other side night everybody